since the designated time has already arrived and is uh, past actually 1 p.m., we should start our uh, hearing. The pro this public hearing of the Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation, joined with public information and mass media, constitutional amendments and revision of codes, science and technology and finance is hereby called to order. Uh, I have been informed that uh, a senator is going to join me later, and that will already uh, constitute the quorum once the senator arrives. But we can, uh, there's nothing in the rules which uh, prevents us to uh, start okay, and proceed. So, uh, Committee Secretary Attorney Dana Minjola, please read into the records the resource persons present this afternoon. Good afternoon. The Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation would like to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests, Executive Director Jose M. M. Tolentino, Jr., Director James Arthur B. Jimenez, Director Jimmy V. Flororita, Deputy Executive Director Bartolome J. Sino Cruz, Jr., Mr. Mac Ramirez, Mr. Lloyd Zaragoza, Attorney Rudolf Fularbal, Mr. Barbie Atienza, Mr. Arman O. Cabrera, Attorney Rona Ann V. Caritos, Attorney Ivan John Uy, Attorney Glenn Chong, and Mr. Leo Alcantara. Thank you. Okay, so thank you uh, to all of our resource persons present this afternoon. Have you been, uh, have you been informed of the agenda for today's hearing? So I will just uh, go over the, the bills that we want to be discussed this afternoon. Senate Bill Number 1319, providing for additional requirements in the printing or broadcasting of election propaganda. SB 1784, strengthening the system of people's initiative and referendum. SB Number 1666, mandating Comelec to provide for the open spaces for of its uh, office for the office spaces of its field offices. SB. 1893 and SB 100, redefining the prohibited act of premature campaigning. SB number 1288, declaring the Punong Barangay resigned upon filing of candidacy. SB number 1710, rationalizing the term limits of elected officials. SB 902, Strengthening the participation of civil society organizations in the formulation of development plan. SB number 1796, creating an election code recodification committee. SB number 1858, providing for the conduct of hybrid elections. Proposed Senate Resolution number 260, directing the committee to conduct an inquiry on the current state of the voters database and proposed Senate Resolution Number 552, directing the committee to conduct an inquiry on the status of automated election system for 2019 and succeeding national and local elections. Regarding the two proposed Senate resolutions, once a uh, senator is, uh, another senator is present here, I will make the mo a motion that since uh, these two resolutions were discussed during the JCOCAES, that the uh, records, the transcript, and whatever documents uh, submitted to, to the JCOCAES about the two resolutions be uh, adopted by this committee. So that will be our action on the two proposed resolutions. So in effect, we will be needing the participation of uh, the resource persons on the Senate bills only, okay, on the Senate bills. So, okay, so let's proceed. Uh, let, we will discuss the bills uh, one by one. And uh, just raise your hand if you have uh, inputs on the bill. And of course, I expect the Comelec to uh, participate uh, actively in our discussion. Okay, so Senate Bill Number 1319, the title is Providing for Additional Requirements in the Printing or Broadcasting of Election Propaganda. I will ask my uh, my lawyer attorney, Charity Ann Rosdon, to give us the uh, just the essence Essence, the essence of the bill, the idea, the new idea behind the bill. Good afternoon to all. Um, this bill, Senate Bill 1319, was introduced by our chair, Senator Coco Pimentel, 
it is found for the purpose of reducing, if not eliminating, the negative advertisements by compelling candidates, groups, or individuals to disclose their identification and personal circumstances. So this bill um, holds the persons, groups, associations, or entities engaged in the printing and broadcasting business responsible for the non-verification of the truthfulness of the identity and address of the person, party, group, or entity that paid for the advertisement. Okay. So, yeah. okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Attorney Chatty. So, uh, for, this, this is based on experience that uh, there are some negative ads which get uh, broad, broadcast, bro broadcasted or carried where uh, the correct identity of the placer of the ad uh, is not divulged. So any any comments, uh, Comelec? Uh, have you studied the, the bill? Uh, thank you, sir. Sir, uh, Director James Jimenez, who used to be the director of the AD, he's now with the planning department. Yeah, she's beside me, so he can give his Director Jimenez, may we know your uh, idea, sir? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the the bill itself is is uh, seeks a very good goal. No? Um, I just have a few questions uh, moving forward, um, Mr. Senator. First of all, um, am I correct in thinking because in the previous version of of nine, in in nine zero zero six, it already contains provisions for paid for and paid by. So basically, this is an expansion of the paid by clause, right? So it's for the benefit of someone. So, um, it, since that's clear, um, it would appear that uh, Section uh, 4.1.A um, very clearly it says that what what you want to happen is you want for the candidate to make it to make it explicit that he approves the message of of the ad. Um, I would like to ask why is there language that says if the advertisement is beneficial to a candidate. Does that mean if the message is not beneficial to the candidate, he won't have to say it? Because it seems to me that as long as the candidate simply says that he approves the message, then whether or not that's beneficial to him is irrelevant. It's he simply approves it, which means that he stands behind whatever the message says. Number two, sir, uh, as for section 4.1.B, um, no person or group or association engaged in printing shall print without verifying the truthfulness. Um, I would like to ask, uh, who is envisioned to enforce this particular provision? Will it be the COMELEC or will it be um, something that the COMELEC can uh, essentially simply require can, um, broadcasting networks to attest to or to, uh, to swear to in some form, uh, in some way, no? Uh, Overall, uh, Your Honor, again, uh, this is a very good, um, I think, a good goal is being pursued here. Um, with the exception of those two reservations, I think this is this is good law. The, uh, the current state of the law is that uh, all ads must be identified by the person placing it or paying for it. Paid for and paid by, sir. Um, which means that uh, the benefit of yeah, paid the benefit for, uh, of yes the paid for is for the benefit of a candidate and the right. paid by is the actual person actual pay paying yeah. okay so uh, because we want to be strict it because this is connected with the airtime limits etc cetera, etc cetera. that's why uh, it would be unfair for a candidate to exceed the airtime limits uh, without his knowledge for example because the the ad is attributed to him paid for candidate X paid by person B. So, so that's why uh, the improvement here is that in the contract there is a written acknowledgement by the candidate that yes, this is my, I am allowed, or, or he appears in the TV, TV ad itself that uh, the, this ad uh, has been approved by me. So there is no this owning minutes. Uh, just in case we will be strict with the uh, airtime list. That is the first part, pardon po yun, just an improvement of the current system. But the improvement in the other side of the coin where it is a negative ad, which is no longer beneficial to the candidate, it's an ad against a candidate. The candidate will never appear na I approve of this ad, but the person placing the ad 
We will allow negative ads, but the person placing the ad must not hide uh, his identity. He, uh, he must be, he or she must be brave enough to also now reveal his identity to the candidate that he or she is attacking. It means, uh, Mr. Chairman, that it's possible that the person saying he approves the message is not a candidate himself? No, no. Pagdating sa he approves the message, he must be the candidate. Because we are not concerned about counting the uh, er, the exposure, the exposure time, okay? But freedom of speech, uh, we will allow negative ads against a candidate. We can never expect a candidate to appear in a negative ad na I'm approving it. But we want fairness that we should know the identity, the correct and true identity of the group, of the person placing the negative ad. And will you require them, for instance, friends of Jose de la Cruz? Will you require a, a representative of friends of Jose de la Cruz to appear in the ad? No, Mark, no, because uh, no, Mark, kasi, uh, the negative ad, you also do not count as uh, air right. time of the candidate. Yung so, yun lang siya sa uh -huh. 4.1.B. That's the, parang, we believe that that, uh, that should uh, improve now also the level of debate because once you... You're allowed to place a negative ad, but you're required to present yourself. Even the language of the negative ad, eh, babantayan mo na, hindi naman yung, uh, because of anonymity, you're, you're careless or reckless with your attacks uh, below the belt. I mean, that, I mean, that is the one of the effects uh, in vision. Uh, at, uh, about Attorney Carita, do you have any opinion here? Uh, or Mr. Alcantara of the ULAP, uh, of course, our uh, media practitioners? Your Honor, just like the just like Director James, we are supportive of this bill because we saw this phenomenon in the last, especially in the last uh, national and local election, where a lot of negative uh, TV commercials appeared in the airwaves. So we are supportive of this. Identify ba sila kung sino nag-trace? Meron naman, Chair. Oh, Ang problema na po yan, ba? yun po, Ayan Chair, na. yun yung mahirap i-trace, eh, yung mga friends' friends. Kasi you can just incorporate it eh, and just... Because, Mr. Chair, ang, ang requirement lang naman is that it appear in the ad in text or audio form. Eh. So, um, I guess from the point of view of the viewer, it's a little hard to say na totoong tao yung mga yun, right? Um, I think the, the, the documentary requirement here is probably what will actually work to identify them. But will this improve the, the current system? Mr. Yes, sir. I think so. Um, anything that adds transparency to the system will be good for it. Uh, uh, Mr. Chensa? Uh, yes, uh, certainly, uh, Mr. Chairman. We fully subscribe to this as a matter of SOP. Upon acceptance of any placement, that is what we require. We actually require a sworn statement from the placers of the ad. Uh, however, the question uh, that I have, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that if it's a negative uh, advertisement against the candidate and into it is also implicitly in the candidate that would require a approval of the of the candidate being endorsed. Uh, yeah, good point. But good point. But uh, uh, if it's a negative ad, do you observe the same uh, requirement or strictures with, with, uh, same as positive ad that the, the, the person placing must be an actual uh, entity, person with address which you also check, kung toto? Certainly, Mr. Chairman. That's what we do as a matter of uh, uh, procedure. Sige. Can you randomly, uh, random lang, give us a sample contract for a negative ad, which indicates the address of the person placing the ad? It's a check lang po namin kung toto, na nandun pa. Sa printing kasi, uh, Mr. Chairman, oh, yeah, we, we can do that. It's a matter of compliance. But even the content itself, because we also practice discretion and editorial content, because uh, we know that uh, in fact, whatever is published in our paper, we also take responsibility for it. So we check on the veracity, the reasonability of the content. So that's good. Uh, yes, um, Attorney Holarban. Your Honor, we, we uh, subscribe and support the objectives of the bill, but uh, there might be some provisions which uh, may be difficult to implement or might not be practical. Uh, for example, as pointed out by uh, 
Mr. Jimenez, 4.1A, for example, the beneficial. It's possible that the party placing the ad is not even in fa uh, favoring or against a particular individual candidate. It might be an advocacy. Botohan natin yung ganitong tao. So, uh, uh, the, the practical, uh, what would be required of us in uh, broadcast, for example, is just we get the identity of the person placing the ad. Uh, in such a case, it may not even be counted as time for a particular candidate. So uh, that's the situation that can be met in this, uh, in this provision, the beneficial uh, uh, impact of the uh, advertisement. With, if this 4.1.A becomes law, the essence, uh, essence uh, subject to style, kung may problema sa wording, uh, there is no escaping now the counting of the airtime for the candidate because he, uh, he will appear in a TV commercial at the end that this is my uh, ad, you count it. In the radio ad, he will have to have a voice, I am. I am candidate X and I approve of this uh, advertisement and in a print siguro uh, signed uh, whatever so uh, sworn statement or a sign there's a signature somewhere in the ad Magano, so ito yung ito yung sa airtime I mean uh, it, the, the, the beneficial uh, ad there's no escaping anymore that you know you, you sumobra ka na whatever you are uh, in a situation where the beneficial uh, the particular candidate benefits it may not be an issue, but uh, as in the example I gave, supposing it is an advocacy uh, advertisement. Because they call like advocacy. How do you treat? How do you treat it? Because it's neutral. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we, um, as far as advocacies are concerned, those those ads which are not sourced directly from any um, identified political player, they're not falling within our regulatory scope. Um, so. Free speech po yan. Counted for anybody. But it's allowed, no? It's allowed. Know, it's, not counted and, for anybody. it's not common, but uh, it's allowed. Uh, I acknowledge the arrival of Senator Sherwin Gachalian. Very hardworking. Ganina pang 9 o'clock yan with this uh, <laughs> hearing on inflation. <laughs> Do votes also inflate? Uh, Senator Gachalian? Right <laughs> Over time, we can play. Okay, uh, so we can leave now this uh, topic with subject to those uh, uh, observations. One well, positive, naman, but maybe some styling. It's a, it's a it's styling. Ah, the acting secretary, Mr. Rio, is also here of uh, DICT. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for coming. We're, we're going through the agenda one by one, sir. Okay. Okay, so next in our agenda, Senate number 1784, strengthening the system of people's initiative and referendum. Attorney Chatios Don, please give us the essence of the bill. So this bill is also introduced by Senator Coho Pimentel. It seeks to empower the people to be able to make amendments to the Constitution through the system of initiative and referendum. Because under the current law, the statutory construction is, diba, in William Defensor Santiago versus Comelec, is that the system of people's initiative and referendum only extends to national and local laws, ordinances, and resolutions. So this bill gives the people the power to directly amend the Constitution through the people's initiative and referendum. Let's now discuss the the bill. Ito na yung ano no? Ito, ito. Oh. Okay, the because our reading of the Supreme Court case is that this was found. What was the technical name? Insufficient, ba? What was the, uh, inadequate? Inadequate uh, is the ruling of the court uh, to when it comes to amending the Constitution. So we want to make it adequate by adding uh, clear language into the law. Any comments? Uh, yes, yes, for our ED, yes? Yes, I think Director Sino Cruz. Director, Director Sino Cruz of uh, the Comelec. Uh, yes, sir, just a few observations uh, to add to the feeling, the gap, uh, the inadequacies. One, sir, yung, 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 since the purpose of the law is to 
give the people the power to directly amend the Constitution, there might be a need to redefine Section 3A of the of the current law, 6735, because in that definition, wala hindi siya nababanggit yung to directly amend the Constitution. So there might be a need to redefine the definition also. Sa current law, sir, 67. Uh, hindi na sa provost bill. Definition, sir. For that observation, uh, Director. Yes, sir. Uh, another thing, sir, is that uh, yung bang total number of registered voters. As we all know, the registered voters is updated every quarter. Once the uh, election registration meets every quarter, the number of registered voters increase. So, kung ano lang yung definite na basis for reckoning the 12% or the 3% or the 10%. Uh, let's say the petition is filed in July. Then the last ERB meeting is uh, maybe April. Should it be reckoned April of that year or the last national elections? Yes, sir. Yung maklarify lang, sir. It's a percentage of yeah. something. Uh, and the number of when do we fix that, that figure, that yes, something? Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you for that observation. It's always moving towards. And lastly, sir, uh, the, the number of days within which uh, Comelec may conduct the, the plebiscite. Uh, can we be given at least uh, 120 to 180? Uh, in the current law, we have 60 to 90 days. Uh, baka maano kami sa procurement law, sir. Uh, procurement of uh, forms and supplies. This is a nationwide exercise. Baka mabitin kami nung sa pagka 60 or 90 lang. Just need additional months to prepare. For the Bang Samoro, basically, uh, Bang Samoro, uh, how many, yes, how many days did they give you? 150 days for the Bang Samoro. Yes. So, same, we follow the same, uh, what did you say earlier? Or uh, yung suggested? Ah, uh, baka pwede sir, abutin ng 180 because these are nationwide. Yeah, and then it's an unforeseen, uh, plebiscite, plebiscite. Yes, sir. We do not know kung kailan yung magkakaroon ng tama. So, okay, so the point of the director is the, uh, the period of the, uh, uh, the the time given for comic to prepare for the plebiscite. Any any other director? Any other observation? Mm -hmm. now, sir. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Alvia is also here of the uh, Namfrel. Mm -hmm. Dr. Okay. Sir, my apologies for the okay. being late. We are now on Senate Bill 1784. So, any co any other comments? Uh, let's give time Mr. Al to, uh, to Mr. Alvia to catch up now. But uh, in the meantime, uh, ah, yes, uh, Dr. Senator Cruz. Uh, there is, uh, in, the, in the current law, there is a reference to the 1987 Constitution. Will it matter? Uh, because uh, there is no way move to, to change the charter. Baka maipit kung hindi mabago yan. Constitution na lang ang manggitin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, tama. Specific tayo sa 1987 Constitution. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, the, yung mga ganyan, yung mga... Uh, no one says. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, we we will give Mr. LB a time to catch up, but we will not leave the subject matter first. Uh, I'll take advantage of the presence of Senator Gatchelian. Uh, if there is no objection, I will now uh, move and adapt actually the discussions as well as documents submitted during the. JCOC on the AES hearing on the two proposed Senate resolutions in our agenda items, the number 260 and number 552. It's just uh, to adapt what happened in the JCOC hearing and all the records be adapted here in this Senate uh, committee. Senator Gatsalian? A uh, second. Okay, thank you. So th that is uh, carried and uh, the committee secretary is uh, directed to also reproduce the records and make it uh, part of the records of this committee. Okay, so any, any other comments on Senate Bill 1784? Okay. Okay, so we will we will uh, we will pass this. Uh, we will, uh, yes, uh, Attorney Caritas. I just have a question for Comelec as to the success rate for uh, People's Initiative, because I. I think for the past few years, there's no successful people's initiative uh, 
alone that has been passed because of a people's initiative or through a people's initiative. I think there's something, uh, the law should be studied further, uh, Chair, because... You want to relax the threshold, the yes. percentages, but can, see, can, we, can, can uh, some groups suggest that what's yes, realistic? Yes, we, we did a study, it's for the Constitutional Commission for the changing the Constitution, so we did a study on the, pr on the percentages that, uh, that can be done for people's initiative, so we'll be submitting that uh, study, Chair. But I uh, think that's, the, uh, that's my question to Kamalek as to the success rate. Pero na ever? Well, uh, for the record, Director, tell us. So, uh, for the record, uh, <laughs> no attempt. No, no attempt. There were, there were attempts. Ah, there were attempts. Uh, uh, but uh, hindi successful. Uh, hindi umabot sa actual uh, uh, plebisito. Umabot sa oral argument sa Supreme Court. Tama, meron, di ba? And the only successful initiative that I know of chair is a barangay ordinance. Uh, yes, uh, barangay Milagrosa in Quezon City. The people, uh, uh, the barangay members there submitted a law, uh, uh, an ordinance. Oh, so that's actually a local initiative. Yes. Yes. So local, but ano the ano requirements don? Uh, um, what percent? Basically the same. Uh, so kaya nga, well, percent of of, of X, what X now did you use you know, para as you applied it, uh, the total number of voters at what particular point in time? Yeah. Check ko lang muna. Basta barangay delegrat. Basta okay, the objective of the bill is to make the law found by the Supreme Court as inadequate, adequate. But upon motion of attorney Caritos of the Legal Network for Truthful Elections, make it also realistic. Uh, so, uh, para, hanapan natin ang paraan uh, to make it realistic. We're, 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 uh, and the test of being realistic is people avail of the law. Okay, we klaro. Ah, yes, sa ito, get sa'yo. I just want to ask, no, kay attorney, uh, an anong threshold for uh, a recall? Tiba get it's for uh, tiba in effect it's uh, the same. Eh. Yes. Tiba. Yes, yes. yes Maraming yes. nagre-recall ah. Pero uh, uh, it depends on the voting population. Correct. Okay, but may threshold yan eh. Twenty percent, ten percent of the voting population depending. Is it the same as the People's Initiative? No, sir. Because it's not fixed. Eh. Okay. Ten percent of the registered voters. Uh, it's a recall voting population. It depends on the number of uh, voting population. Yung percentage naka, nakadikit sa voting population. So, ah, meron siyang yes, para bracket. Uh, bracket. May uh, bracket. Pag ganitong siya. population, ito yung percentage requirement ng petitioners. Pag ganitong population, this is the percentage requirement. Ah, yung okay, okay, okay. Yung kanina, so yung sa, ano, sa Barangay Milagrosa, based on 6730... Director, director, use the mic. If it's a region, province, city, uh, well, in, in, in this thing, we said 10% of the registered voters. No. In, the, in the successful story of Milagrosa, Barangay Milagrosa, Quezon City, to, to answer your question, mo kanina, Director, what 10% of what number did you use at yung, one day? Yung kung ano sa yung, yung ini, uh, subject ng initiative, kung sa barangay ordinance siya, uh, nung percent the registered voters of the barangay. As of what time? Yun sarang moving pa rin talaga. Kasi at that time, siguro ginawa to, hindi pa tayo, wala pa tayong system of continuing registration na every uh, quarter uh, 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 na update ang registered voters. Good, yeah, good, good, good point, good point. Okay, so the effort now must be, okay, we make it adequate and we make it accessible. Uh, okay. Uh, but but we will we will uh, we will now uh, fast track this bill. So, okay, so we, we can now leave it. Okay, next Senate Bill Number One Six Six Six, mandating Comelec to provide for the office spaces of its field offices. The attorney uh, Osborne, please uh, just just the essence of the yes, bill. Yes, sir. Senate Bill Sixteen Sixty Six, introduced by Senator Laila De Lima recognizes the autonomy of the COMELEC as a constitutional commission uh, by mandating it to provide new office spaces for its field offices. So since under se Section 55 of the Omnibus Election Code, it is the LGUs that shall provide the office for the provincial election supervisor and his staff, it makes the COMELEC dependent on LGUs in certain aspects. So it says that it is contrary to Article 9A, Section 5 of the Constitution, which provides for the fiscal autonomy of the COMELEC. 
Any comment, Director? Yes, we, we support the Senate bill, of course. Uh, but then I think the, the law should also provide for the appropriations because I think it's not included in the, in the bill. Impossible, what I can say. Page two, line seven. Pero pero kaya ito kaya ito. When we talk about field offices, ilan bayan, ilan bayan, and then as of the moment, what is the setup so that we will understand what we are approving? The only reason, sir. Clarification lang on the appropriations and the amount was not specified. So anyway, we have 81 provincial offices, 1,657 offices of the election officers, 1,657. Election officers, office of the election officers. Then 16 regional election director's office. No, 17. Meron na palang 4B. 17 regional election director's office. Now, we are... For the regional election directors, come an expense for the payment of the rentals. For the provincial offices, generally it is the provincial government that provides. But if they cannot provide for an office space, uh, COMELEC pays and we require the reimbursement, which the local government does not do. <laughs> so election officer naman po, it's uh, the LGU will be the one to provide. The only problem is sometimes it's under the stairs, it's near the CR, so it's not really suitable. No, in, no instance where the office of the EO was uh, paid for by the common like subject to reimbursement. Parang nangyari sa provincia. Meron din natin, yes sir. If, if the local government will not provide for any you office. Wait, and then, yes. Okay, D do they pay? No. Parehas de parang province yes, then? Yes, sir. Uh, just recently, the, the provincial government of Davao del Sur ejected our uh, provincial election supervisor. Initially, sabi niya, we will transfer you to an office space. And when they moved, they said that we won't provide any space anymore. That's why we are renting. Yeah. Yeah. Is this? Sin, Attorney Chong. Actually, sir, I am uh, cognizant of the of the itong kalagayan ng mga election officers in in LGUs. In many cases, yung opisina nila is not really. Uh, I mean, they also deserve dignity, even if I've been you know criticizing them all the time. But more importantly, sir, is the independence of the commission. Kasi pag and then yan sila sa local government, they can be actually subject to pressure from the incumbent officials. And in most cases, ang danger kasi with this automated election system is yung pre-shaded voting, or pre-shaded ballots. Of course, hindi na nahin nila yung kasalanan dito. Doon yan sa baba. That's why, uh, yung mga balota, sir, di ba, they actually arrive a few days before the elections. I'm not accusing them, ha, to be fair with them. Di wala naman yan sila pinalaman yun sa baba, sir. Because the local officials will really exert pressure on the election officers. At kung hindi susunod, ayan, itatapon, paalisin. So I think this bill is really timely and uh, of course I support this bill to give them dignity and um, you know, to make sure also that itong incidents of pre-shaded votes can also be minimized if they are more independent. Okay, so Thank you, uh, the... the uh, Providing office spaces could mean uh, leasing office space or maybe even up to building your own. But separate, I am not assuming that Comelec has uh, real property holdings in, uh, in in provinces. You don't have, no? Or, you, or do you have? But there are some uh, local government units that donated uh, 
flats. Like we have one in uh, Region 2 in, in Tugigarao. Uh, we have one in Legaspi, Region 5. The, the other regions have a pending deeds of use of rock. Yeah, isabay na natin ito sa build, build, build. Uh, yeah, build your infrastructure din. But not, 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 not massive infrastructure naman ito. Uh, suitable office. Siguro, uh, let's subject this to a uh, uh, rigorous TWG where Comelie can also come up with a master plan for the, to, to yung minimum or yung, yung in your opinion, the most practical uh, design for a Comelie EO office, provincial office, regional office, then mag-costing mag tayo kung ilan sa build, and then, uh, and then, you also now base your lease requirements following still the the minimum uh, requirements for an uh, efficient uh, Comelec field office. Ano siguro gawin natin? So, Actually, sir, we already have that. Uh, we're just starting with the regional offices, especially those where lots have been donated. And so you don't need this law. Well, we you, can, you can do it. We still need it, sir. Otherwise, we won't have the sufficient funds to provide the office spaces for 1,657 election officers. Yun yung malaki, sir, eh? yung uh, unahin natin yung head office nyo. We, we, yes, sir. Diba? Sir, meron na, sir. Uh, Maglilis lang kayo dun, eh. Diba? Yes, sir. Oh, but, uh, hindi, ibig sabihin na, sir, we, we, we have this, no, uh, yung, yung dae, we have a lot at the reclamation area. It's two hectares. We're, st we're starting the design. We're conducting a bidding for that. And then hopefully by the start of next year, we can already have the final design so we can start constructing the building. Main, sa main office yan. I noticed like for example, yung may mga field offices uh, all over the country. This is purely uh, nasa budget to ng Pomelec. Yung meron kami budget for rentals. For rentals, and, oh. and yung budget na yun is for rentals ng regional offices. The regional Pati offices and provincial offices. Yung provincial, sir, it's supposed to be provided by the LGU. Under the law? Yes, sir. And we only pay rentals if the LGU refuses to provide okay. a suitable okay. office space. Right, right. But otherwise, it's uh, provided by the local government for free? Yes, sir. There are some election officers' office na maganda. Balance well is one. I mean building, building. I mean building, ah, Right, building. Hindi yun office, building. If this bill becomes law, even in Valenzuela, you have to move out. Ganon yung. I think this is the essence of the of the bill, de ba? Di na sa ito donate na lang ni Senator. Standalone building for Comelec, alam? Ah, oh, no, no, I understand. Akala ko, ano lang. Iba talagang Balenzuela. Sino mayor ng time na yun? Oh. Siyempre, alam na natin. Okay, congratulations to uh, Senator Wynn when he was mayor of Valenzuela. I mean, forward-looking. Nauna, nauna na siyang ginawa na niya. So, sige, siguro ganito. Ah, uh, so we have to pursue this uh, uh, and prioritize yes, this bill. No? Yes, so, but we need numbers, siguro. We need numbers kasi if you find the Section 6 uh, inadequate because necessary amounts lang, maybe we can have uh, an amount. We can put an amount. Sure. Sige, yes, sir. Uh, sir, we, uh, yes, we had through discussions with Comelec offices. And we have also had a focus, focus group discussion with the Financial Services Department and Admin Services Department. And we have numbers as to if they want to build, if they want to rent out. And if they want to build, the cost estimate for uh, the 1,490 municipal election officers' field offices, 167 city election, and 81 PES offices, 
the total cost is 7.6 billion pesos for all of those offices bid. But if they will be renting out, the additional amount for their budget is 1.3 billion every year. So that's for rental. And the office space, we also consulted with them. For municipal offices, uh, based on our field discussions with their election officers, they're requesting for 100 square meters. For their city election officers, 250. And the, for the pets, 350. And they're requesting for storage talaga po for their documents, their voluminous documents. So we have put the, the research if, I don't know, we'll just submit the data to the Secretariat. So maganda, we have, we have some guiding uh, numbers. 1 billion kung purely lease, okay. Apo, 7 right. billion purely bills, yeah. so yung combination of the two, somewhere in between. Tama ba yan? 1, one to 7, yes, so sa pa natin. Ay, uh, Attorney Chong. Your Honor, since the purpose of the proposed bill is uh, to strengthen the independence of the Commission, um, I don't know if tumatanggap yung mga election officers ng allowances or for office uh, office uses, I think we should also include a provision here, sir, uh, expressly prohibiting those ano, nahihingi sila doon sa local governments. I'm not accusing them, but it should also be included to strengthen really the independence of the Commission. May we know the Thank situation you, now? Uh, do some election officers receive allowances from LGUs? As I understand it, sir, they're given uh, office supplies. They're allowed to use a motor vehicle from the LGU and are provided uh, fuel allowance. Because we will we will treat you like uh, the judiciary. You know that, but there's now a wall. Because ano nige? Ano kasi nige? You 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 adjudicate. You judge. Uh, you don't only administer uh, election laws, but you also judge some uh, cases, eh. uh, election offenses, pa. Say. So, you know, you know, uh, Attorney Chong, that should should that be the trend? That yes, sir. You treat I, them as if they're the part of the judiciary. Yes, sir. I think the begin the the ganon um, operating exp, uh, I am okay. Uh, nila, oh, para hindi hihingi don sa local governments. Uh, LGUs, because don't, don't, that's the way the LGUs get hold of local municipal election officers uh, and the uh, provincial election supervisor. Thank you, sir. Can, can figures be brought out in the technical working group kung magkano yung ganun? Kung, kung we will put up, uh, we will uh, observe absolute separation or independence from magkano yung assistance man na mawawala in the form of uh, transportation, gas, uh, office supplies, mga uh, we will gladly join the TWG and provide the necessary information. It's the general direction, ah, gawin natin, yes, ah, the, the standards or the for independence uh, to protect the independence of the judiciary. We also apply to the Comelec. Is that uh, objectionable? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, Mr. Serrano. Yes, uh, Dr. Serrano. Pa. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, oh, with regards to the to the. Uh, other assistance, no, uh, even even uh, supplies. I don't see any reason for that. Uh, na parang that would affect the independence or integrity of the Comelec. Siguro kung sa part namin mas mas gusto pa nga namin na wala na mga detailed personnel coming from the LGU assigned to Comelec. Kasi tong mga tong mga support na ito. You mentioned about the judiciary. Even judiciary also receive uh, some uh, some assistance from the LGU. Pero siguro kung when we talk about the real definition of independence and integrity of Comelec uh, for this uh, particular uh, reason why why Senator Dilima uh, uh, filed this bill is because uh, maganda siguro na alisin na natin yung mga detailed uh, personnel coming from the Office of the Mayor or even Office of the uh, Governor in that uh, in that case, po. Tell us more about this uh, detailing of uh, personnel. Uh, what's the current situation? We commonly gets uh, manpower their manpower requirements from the LGU. Uh, yes, sir. But it's not the LGU which provides for the manpower. Uh, it is the election officer which would be the one to hire 
it's only the LGU which pays the wages. Still, you know, the, the relationship, the close relationship is being encouraged by the setup. No? Sige, okay, but basta ganun tayo papunta, ha? That's, the, that's the plan. That's the plan. I mean, tama naman, hindi pa rin perfectly separated the judiciary from the LGU, but at least the efforts are there no? to to keep them separated. That there's, a, there's a wall. Yes, exactly. Sir, ang concern lang kasi, sir, is that uh, majority of our field offices have only two personnel. It's the election as officer and one election assistant. And while we are asking... Uh, for upgrading of the positions depending on the number of uh, registered voters, hindi kami binibigyan ng DBM niyan. So, kumbaga, one election assistant would be insufficient. That's why... But ilan ba ano yun? How many are uh, in the employee of the Comelec plantilla? And then, magkano yung PS niyo? So I, I think we have a total of uh, 5,000, more or less, in the field. Kasi, I, well, including... Uh, every 5,000 and then PS. Anyway, that can be seen sa budget naman. Ano? Oh, kasi one, kasi one ta you are present in all the 1,500 plus municipalities, no? Yes, sir. There's two times two na. 3,000 na halos yun. Yes, yun yun. Okay. I get it. Uh, Chair, there's a similar bill filed at the House by Chair Tugna as well, and his version is on office spaces and the prohibition of LGU casuals to come like field offices. And one of the proposals that came out uh, in our discussions with the come like field officials is uh, to make it uh, there's a, to allocate additional EA items or election assistant items to come like field officials instead of hiring casuals again, just in line with the policy of the government to end contractualization. So that's one of the proposals on the table to just to just add EA items per twenty thousand voters. So that's the ratio for one EA twenty thousand voters. Uh, would that be sufficient, uh, E.D.? Uh, yes, sir. We've been asking uh, support from the DBM, but it hasn't been granted. But if there is a law... Yeah, if, the we make it, if we make it by law, then although it can still be delayed, but at least there is legal basis to demand for it. Yes, sir. Okay, okay say, Mr. Ramirez of the e e Employees Union. So we are supportive of the bill. Para yung sa office spaces, support na po kami dyan. And to address yung problema sa LGU casuals, tama po, kailangan mag-create uh, ng additional election assistant positions. So ngayon talagang kulang na kulang po talaga. And okay. also, to, uh, para mas ma-promote din yung independence ng mga empleyado, kailangan din i-upgrade yung salaries ng mga empleyado, sa, lalo na yung mga field offices. So what the, what, uh, what is the law governing the salaries of uh, Comelec employees? Sa ngayon, sir, yung salary standardization law pa rin. Pero if we compare yung salaries ng mga, lo yung mga local election officers compared to other office heads sa baba, napag-iwanan talaga, sir. Di ba napag-usapan natin yung... So, uh, okay. Yeah, we will follow the SSL Opo. except that the... Ano ba tawag mo doon? The... What do you call that? The, uh, salary grade. Uh, salary grade. The, uh, the, the position, the name of the position, we... Uh, salary, salary. The angat na, angat na kasi yung salary grade nun, you know, when you... Yes, sir. Uh, that would be reclassification. Reclassification. Uh, that's it. So is that, is that what you're asking for now? Reclassification. Yes, sir. Okay, so we will now, ano, uh, uh, we will have a technical working group here. Com uh, we will combine. Uh, th there's nothing which will prevent us from pursuing the general idea of the bill, which is to uh, enhance the independence of the Comelec, and we will add this idea of the casuals, the hiring of casuals, okay, by prohibiting it coming from the LGUs and empowering Comelec to 
uh, build up its organic personnel. Okay, ganun ang, ano, okay? So we will, we will schedule this and please participate the legal network uh, for two elections, the, the, the union and then the COMELEC itself and whoever, uh, the other uh, stakeholders. Okay, so are we ready to proceed? Okay. Senate Bill Number 1893 and SB Number 100. Okay. Redefining the prohibited act of premature campaigning. Okay, Attorney uh, Osdon, please give us the essence of the two bills. Yes, sir. Senate Bill Number 1893 by Senator De Lima and Senate Bill Number 100 by Senator Dick Gordon both is about, uh, are about the uh, premature campaign. So, uh, the current ruling by the Supreme Court is that a candidate is liable for election offenses only upon the start of the campaign period. So, thus, effectively decriminalizing premature campaigning. So, Senate Bill 1893 aims to reconcile the conflicting provisions of the Omnibus, Omnibus Election Code and RA 9369 by introducing a new person liable for the election offenses on premature campaigning, which is a prospective candidate. While Se Senate Bill 100 by Senator Gordon proposes to correct this anomaly by amending the language in Republic Act 9369 to clarify that candidates may indeed be liable for unlawful acts even before the campaign period, including premature campaigning. Uh, uh, any comments? <laughs> uh, but the uh, who has studied the, the said bills? Okay, uh, Director Jimenez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, before we get into the into everything else, uh, I'd like to ask line seven uh, on page two of uh, 1893. It says um, preceding elections. Um, shouldn't that be immediately succeeding elections because it's it's talking about a prospective candidate? immediately preceding me is the one before. So, um, it should be succeeding, I think, sir. So that's correct. That's that correct. might be uh, corrected. Um, the two, um, at first glance, the two might seem to be uh, attacking uh, the same subject in, in just two different ways. But it's actually, I think, attacking <coughs> two different aspects of the same problem. Um, Senator Lila de Lima's bill basically says that um, if you make it known in any way that you intend to run, you're already liable, whereas uh, Senate Bill 100 requires you, in order for you to be liable, to actually file a certificate of candidacy. Um, Senate Bill 100 simply corrects the problem in the existing uh, 9369 where there is a specific clause that says um, basically that the filing of the certificate of candidacy is essentially only for the purpose of getting on the ballot, and that all of the acts will not uh, will not be attributed until the start of the campaign period. Yun po yung pinanggalingan ng problema. So in the sense that that corrects that, then uh, we are very supportive of this particular bill. During the Senate Bill 1893, it, it becomes, uh, it, it sort of expands the issue because it now creates a prospective candidate. Again, I, I, we, we've been looking at this and um, it looks it looks like a, a I don't know that it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna go over well with a lot of politicians, especially since um, it will it will certainly um, affect um, the things that they do, uh, especially in the one year period immediately prior to the elections. So, um, but um, again, in general, the Comelec supports any move to uh, curtail premature campaigning. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd just like to point out that on page 3, uh, lines 20 to 24, um, again, seem to defang the immediately preceding uh, provisions um, because it creates a distinction that is a little too subtle. No? Um, basically, uh, the section preceding that uh, passage defines election campaigns as a uh, as an act which uh, technically would be punishable if done out of time, but sex, um, the passage starting from line 20, the foregoing enumerated acts, 
he performed for the purpose of enhancing the chances for nomination. Um, it, it, it provides uh, politicians an out. Um, so they can simply say that, uh, you know, I put out my posters because I want to secure the nomination of my party. And automatically that removes all of, all of the partisan political activities from the ambit of the prohibition. So that might be considered, uh, Your Honor, uh, for amendment. Um, but again, overall, the COMELEC uh, supports uh, the, the intention behind these bills. The, the uh, paragraph cited by Director Jimenez in lines 20 to 24 on page 3 of Senate Bill number 1893 is actually not a new idea in the bill because if, if you if you if yeah if you notice in this uh, bold face and uh, all caps so it is existing law yes. yeah magandang point John so even even existing law might have uh, provides review. for a ano ba tawag mo dyan, uh, so escape bound yes. okay. Uh, okay so uh, any other comments parang kasi you will be this is this is a, this will become premature campaigning will now become an election offense yes. which is now Comelex uh, jurisdiction, di ba? To prosecute. Yes, yan, ang, yan ang tanong. Uh, is this hard to administer? <laughs> or difficult to, well, it, to implement? <laughs> so one, kasi you will now look at acts when uh, at, at, at a period when you still do not know if uh, they are election offenses unless and until a subsequent act is uh, committed or made. Yes, sir. And then, meron pang plus subject to the escape bug uh, paragraph that you cited. Yes, sir. But, Mr. Chair, um, well, the first thing the first thing to consider here is that acts of this nature are by their, are essentially um, very public. They're easy to spot. Um, so, basically, all, with, all, all the community could be required to do is to uh, pay attention to what's being said and what's being put out there and just track them to see if they actually filed. Because the minute they file, then they retroactively become prospective uh, candidates and then they'll be uh, liable. So um, yes, it will be a lot of work, but uh, I think, um, Mr. Chair, I, you know, I, speaking for myself, I think it's something that the COMELEC would want to undertake. So when, when they actually file, they became the prospective candidate that the law referred to. Yes, sir. But since they have filed, they are actually now candidates. Yes, sir. So that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But um, I think the purpose of, of calling them prospective is to capture everything that they did prior. There is, we have uh, the politician's uh, representative here, uh, Mr. Alcantara. What is the position of the ULAP regarding this uh, prospective candidate uh, concept? I think I failed to cut it as I was out. Uh, ito po, please study, please study uh, Senate Bill number 1893 as well as 100 po, and just give. Tell us if you have a position. Lang. Just in case. Okay. Just in case. Uh. Yes, sir. Uh, any other comments? Uh, yes, Mr. Alvia. Yes, uh, I think Senate Bill number 100 is a uh, more practical solution rather than the previous uh, 1893. Because again, no, you broaden the period. No? Because right now there's the dilemma because of the Supreme Court ruling. I think this is uh, a better fix. Okay, so. Uh, Senate Bill 100, the prohibitions during the campaign period will not be extended to all the way back to the fi filing day. Ganun pa na. Ganun lang. Sim ganun lang. Simple. Ganun simple concept. Okay. Okay, so sige, we, we will uh, study the said two bills subject to the comments that we have uh, received this afternoon. Okay, so we will leave the subject matter. Bill number 1288, declaring the Purong Barangay resigned upon filing of candidacy. Attorney uh, Osdon, please. 
the essence of the bill? Sir, Senate Bill 1288 by Senator Sherwin Gatchalian, 6 to have the Punong Barangay considered resigned upon filing of the Certificate of Candidacy because it states that the power and influence of the Punong Barangay has been abused for personal advantage and benefit through express and open campaigning. Mr. Chair, I will yes, uh, yes, yes, give um, uh, some, some uh, explanation of this concept. Um, I, I noticed, uh, Mr. Chair, that, uh, well, first of all, the election of the local and the barangays are two different dates. No? So um, let's give a very specific example. Coming this um, 2019, no, there will be a local elections. And uh, I noticed that uh, some parties who cannot fill up their lineup, no, at pinipilit nila to fill up their lineup, they will just get uh, barangay captains to fill up that lineup, no, uh, because the barangay captains don't need to resign to become a, a candidate, no, whether it's vice mayor or or uh, concejal, they can just file. But at the same time, those barangay captains are executives of their own locality. So just imagine if you have a group of barangay captains who can spend, no, use their barangay uh, funds to spend, uh, in effect, it, it becomes an unfair playing field uh, to the other candidates. And uh, manalo matalo sila, uh, sorry, matalo sila man, babalik lang sila as barangay captains. No? So uh, it becomes... Uh, uh, it creates an unlevel playing field in the uh, election process because uh, they have the capability to spend their funds. No? So that is the logic of those uh, of, of this uh, proposal, Mr. Chair. No. Comments? Yes, uh, Dr. Serrano. Yes, uh, Senator Wing. Uh, is this also uh, same with those uh, ABC president? Who is also a punong barangay that runs for a, a, a district councillor's position. If, if he loses, if he or she lo, lo, loses the election, uh, automatically he, he or she cannot also uh, uh, assume no, he, his councillor seat as ABC president. Yes, the ABC, the, his. Position as a uh, as a councillor is by virtue of his being a kapitan, and the kapitan elects him as the uh, representative in the council. So, for example, po um, for example, is a kapitan, no? and then he runs for uh, a a district councillor. Um, he has to resign, no? and uh, when he resigns as a barangay captain, no, then he can be. Uh, a candidate for other elective posts. No? But as you mean, yung kagawad will go up. No, kagawad will go up. No, yung dun po sa pagiging ABC president. ABC yung meron silang ano? Eh, may vice president sila. Eh. So it happened to our in, in, in our case in Valenzuela. Nangyari hu yun sa amin yung ABC uh, resign. No, and then the nag vice president o siya. Other comment? Yes, Attorney Carito. Senator Nguyen, don't you want to extend the uh, automatic resignation to the other barangay officials, to the barangay kagawads, or you just want to target the captains only? Yeah, I'm, I'm open to discussion. The, the, the point there kasi is the captain performs an executive function. So he uh, exerts a lot of influence as well as a lot of um, authority in dispensing uh, uh, the barangay funds, um, the kagawads kasi, but you're right, the kagawads in this in that same concept, uh, the kagawads can run for councillor, pag hindi siya natalo, balik siya. No? Uh, may, may logic lang here since the kapitan exerts a lot of uh, influence because of that fiscal uh, authority, um, dapat siya yung mag-resign. No? That, that was the logic, but I'm open to, uh, to, to, uh, to amendments or proposals. No? For the record stated, uh, Mr. Saragos of Democracy Watch. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, we have the same sentiments with uh, Attorney Caritas. If it could be expanded to include uh, 
uh, barangay, all barangay officials who would uh, later on uh, file their certificates of candidacy. The, uh, uh, what is the current state of the law now? Uh, it's it's not automatic resignation, right? Any 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 elected official running for another office stays, right? So don't you want to change that rule, uh, Senator Sherwin, for everybody? Your Honor, because that used to be the rule before, except for President and Vice President. You know, you know, your rule before, eh? Mr. Chair. Ah, yes, uh, Attorney Chong. Yes, if if I were the barangay captain. And I am uh, matamaan po ako dito sa bill ni Senator Wynn. Ako'y magre-reklamo sa Korte Suprema dahil it's a violation of my equal um, constitutional right to equal protection of the laws. Kasi barang kay Captain na nga natatamaan ni eh. Or lahat dapat. That, that's uh, that's my that's what my uh, no, sir my concern. Yeah, attorney, attorney, may you have a point, but my logic there is the powers are all are different, no? The powers and of the kagawad and the kapitan, malaki yung difference nila, no? So, yung kagawad they cannot uh, execute project, they cannot dispense project, but in kapitan they can really they can really uh, wield so much authority. No? That, that was my logic, but again, I yes, your honor, your honor. The, the, the Puneng Barangay is executive. It should also include the mayor, which is also executive, and the governor, who are also executive. That's what I am thinking about. Along that line, sir. The, the reason why I didn't ask I had that, because the the election, uh, um, the timing of the election for the mayor and the vice mayor, what, pareho sila eh. So magre-resign ka talaga eh. No, for example, you're a mayor, you're running for congressman, magre-resign ka talaga eh. Or if you're a mayor running for senator, magre-resign ka talaga. Unlike yung kapitan, iba yung election time eh. No? Senator, that's why I asked for the current state of the law. Now, a mayor who wants or will run for senator does not is, is not deemed resign. That used to be the rule before. Ang exception lang, if you're running for president or vice president, you are not deemed resigned. Oh. Okay, this your your bill might lead to going back to the rule before, wow. uh, which is also good, ah. Para walang yung walang yung speculative uh, candidacy. Oh, wow. and, that, and that actually cures. Uh, that, that's exactly my point, sir. So para yung mga kalaman, tapos lahat. We see the point of uh, Senator Gatchalampo na si Barangay, uh, different po yung term ni, ni Mayor. Eh. So even if the mayor would file for a higher position, eventually, uh, at the end of the election, tapos na po yung term niya as Mayor. Eh. Regardless kung manalo siya or matalo, ma manalo or matalo, tapos na yung term niya for for that particular, yung incumbency niya, tapos na. But as to the barangay, given na magkaiba yung, magkaiba yung term, uh, even if he will or if he loses that particular election, mag-report po siya sa position niya sa barangay official. Eh. So, technically, um, yung mindset na, anyway, insurance ko pa, kung manalo, biayos. Pag matalo ako, Okay pa rin ako, susweldo pa rin ako sa ibarangay. So, yun, 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 I think yun yung gusto nyo yun, yeah, that's why... Uh, if, we give that, if, if we give that attitude a label na uh, speculative candidacy, ang tawag natin dyan, we can also apply it nga to the others. Ganon din yung speculative candidacy, yung mayor to senador, mayor to congressman. Uh, but if you go back to the old rule, and then October, let's say, ilang months yun, three, three, eight months from election day ang, uh, ang filing, then that, that incumbent loses the eight months. Ama, if you go back to the old rule, the eight months, if you follow the Comelec calendar. So, ganito na lang gawin natin because it has opened uh, 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 some ideas, so many ideas. Can I ask the... Uh, persons as well as the groups uh, present in. If you if you uh, deem it uh, wise for you to do so, uh, please submit position paper on this particular bill. Because 
uh, it's a focus on the Punong Barangay because as as explained by Senator Sherwin and Mrs. Saragosa, iba yung term no? at saka yung date, date of election. Pwede kung sino tayo natin na movable din yung ano, uh, may effect ba yun na sometimes the election date of the barangay is, uh, barangay can be postponed or moved. So, may effect din ba yun? So, pag-aralan natin. No? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ah, yes, that's easy. Yeah. Oh, yes, Director. Director Kasingal, sir, from the Kasingal. department. Yes, we noticed under Section 3 on the designation of who will perform the functions and duties in case the barangay, punong barangay will be considered assigned. Nakalagay dito, sir, it is a commission on elections that will designate. Pero ang komele kasi sir, once the candidate has been proclaimed, taken his out of office and assumed office, nawawala ni jurisdiction ng komele. It will now be the DILG which has jurisdiction over the official. So we believe that it should be the DILG that will designate the, the person who will perform the functions of the punong barangay. I think the... the we will only resort to designation if naubos yung yung kag, yung kagawad. Yan yata yan eh. Yes, Your Yan Honor. siguro yung extreme ex, extreme case yata ito na, na naisip dito. Yes, Your Honor. And then I... Because, because all of them, all of them run. <laughs> yan yata yan eh. Kasi otherwise, kung merong, if there is an in, ka incumbent kagawad left, uh, succession siya, rule of succession. Ganun ang gagawin. So, ibig sabihin nun, ganun ganun pala kalala ang sitwasyon sa Valenzuela na nauubos ang mga barangay officials tumatakbo na <laughs> ganun ba balik ay okay, chairman na experience ko kasi yan uh, <laughs> kasi nga tama si uh, Lloyd walang 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 nothing to lose eh, in other words no so they can uh, keep on running and they can also we, we also came across that, uh, for example, there are three uh, uh, requirements for council or tatlong kapitan pinatakbo. In effect, parang they can be collaborated and use the funds of those barangays na magkakatabi. No? So it's just uh, making the playing field even no, for um, for the other candidates. Ready to read my call for position papers kasi magandang it is cast to pursue. So, a week, in a week's time, you know, one week, one week, so we can, if I need to reschedule this for a, a hearing, I will do, I will do it. <clears throat> okay. Okay, can we, can we now proceed to Senate Bill number 1710, rationalizing the term limits of elected officials. Uh, Attorney Osdon, please give us the essence of the bill. Senate Bill 1710, by Senator Naila Delina, proposes to rationalize the implementation of executive term limits as provided in the Constitution. So it seeks to clarify the sentence, voluntary renunciation of the office for any length of time shall not be considered as an interruption in the continuity of the service for the full term of which he was elected. Because right now, it says that there's no uniform application of the rules. So it clarifies the provisions on the application of consecutive term limits, valid interruptions, and voluntary renunciation. Uh, sige, very interesting. A very interesting bill. Any any comments? Do we need this or uh, already provided for in uh, jurisprudence. Yes, uh, Director Kasingan. Uh, yes, Your Honor. This is just a consolidation of all the decisions of the Supreme Court on the three-term limit of uh, officials. So consistent. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the entire bill, all the concepts in the in, in the bill are consistent with rulings of the Supreme yes, Court. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, so From the, the case of uh, Socrates to Abundo. Oh, it's so. Will there be any damage if we make case law uh, positive law? Parang mas maganda ito, Your Honor. Na, 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 law. Uh, 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 para wag mag-change ang case law. Para wag mag-change ang case law. Tama rin. Uh, maybe Attorney Ivan, uy, uh, practicing lawyer, can you, uh, have, you seen, have you seen the bill? 
according to the uh, law department of the COMELEC, it, it, it uh, parang codifies the various ruling, uh, rulings of the Supreme Court on term limits. So. Yes. But if we, if we pass a law which, which does that, uh, is it a good idea or is it best to just leave uh, case law to itself? <laughs> Well, well um, it, it, it establishes a certain level of predictability um, and stability so that, um, you know, the, because case, case law, the, the judiciary can always reinterpret <laughs> the, the, the term limits. But so long as you put it into a law, I think um, at least there's more predictability and stability with respect to the terms. Oh. So has it ever happened before that uh, le the leg legislature enacted a law codifying which, which just captures uh, a case law, a ruling of a case law? Or a rule? I, I, I think there are several, several, several yes, um, the, in the form of a remedial law. Um, but we are not remedying anything. Or we, no, no, this is right. entirely consistent with case law, according to uh, Director Tangaro Casingal of the Law Department of Comelec. <laughs> okay, but, uh, but if there's no harm that, no harm, no harm in doing it. But I will inhibit, I will inhibit from uh, sponsoring this beneficiary. <laughs> diba? Baka may, baka may issue pa eh. Si, uh, si Senator Sherwin will be the one to sponsor and defend this uh, bill. Uh -oh. Any other comment? Yes, that direct calls, uh, Dr. Serrano. Uh, if I may ask now, uh, remember Senator Miriam uh, who was uh, nominated and, and uh, approved no, by the United Nations to sit in the International Tribunal, will will also that be uh, related to this uh, particular bill of Senator De Lima? Maybe that was also, I think, uh, one of the things in her mind while uh, why she crafted this uh, particular bill. Is that also what is, so your, what is your scenario? There, there is a senator now yes. who, who is elected in an international body yes. and accepts the yes that will not in her conflict with, with his or her duties as a legislator. Okay, she's because the, that that particular uh, tribunal body would only uh, hear cases uh, maybe one in one in, once in a year or once in two years or three years. Uh, the, that it will not affect also. Did the senator's uh, uh, tenure in office uh, got affected by the no because affected uh, by the uh, by the election to the international body. No, because uh, in the case of Senator William, if I remember it right, uh, eventually she she declines. No, but she accepted it, uh, first. No, and then when when that period is uh, about to start. Uh, she declines it. So what will happen now if uh, in that particular scenario, Senator uh, Gachalian will uh, be nominated in the uh, International Labor uh, Tribunal, no? uh, and then uh, he accepted it. Uh, will it also be run counter to his duty as a legislator? So the answer would be found on page 3, line 10. So... Is that now, now an acceptance of an incompatible appointment? So, Siguro, if it will if it will lead the senator to resign, then that's voluntary renunciation, as if na mo yung term mo, ganon yung counted yung term mo. That would help. That's how I interpret the, the the bill. So the answer is, if the senator accepts it, it does not interrupt his term. Uh, uh, oh, counted na yun. I say one term na siya. Because that's uh, voluntary renunciation. Even if it does not uh, uh, affect uh, 
his or her duties as a legislator. And let us say it does not affect and he continues to function as a legislator. They all the more one term kasi natapos bali niya yung term. Eh. Okay. Ang problematic scenario is if, if he or she resigned because of that appointment. Na, na, so, so if he or she resigns? And then uh, i-argue niya na it was not, uh, uh, hindi naman, uh, Uh, interrupted yung term ko. Pasok siya sa Section 6, Acceptance of an Incompatible Appointment as a Voluntary Renunciation. Okay, so any other comment here? So pag-isipan na lang natin kung ano. Uh, so the committee will now just have to uh, discuss and decide if the bill is necessary. Since it it uh, already captures and uh, encapsulates uh, jurisprudence, but what is the final opinion of the law department director uh, Kasingal? Uh, you want you? It's better uh, that we have. Your Honor, no? it would be easier for us to render legal opinion if, if we have this law. No, it yes. is. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So we will leave now the subject matter. Uh, Senate Bill Number 902, strengthening the participation of civil society organizations in the formation of development plan. Attorney Osdon will uh, give us the essence of the said bill. Senate Bill Number 902 is by Senator J.B. Herceto. It proposes to strengthen the role and rights of civil society organizations to ensure their effective and reasonable participation at all levels of social, political, and economic decision making. So it provides for their accreditation and invitation to submit proposals proper to the planning. Any comments, please? Any comments? Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Yes. Alvia of yes. friend. Yes, we're aware that uh, there's already uh, a provision for the LGUs no, to invite uh, local CSOs uh, to the special boards and councils. The problem lies in, let's say, those CSOs are uh, don't have their bona fides no, or also track record. So anyone who's related, let's say, to a local official can just come out or even appoint that local uh, CSO or NGO as the accredited uh, NGO to be recognized or to participate in uh, uh, the special boards or councils. So probably maybe request probably strengthening of that accreditation process or recognition process. So that's that's the constraint that we see. Because we've, got, we've asked uh, the LGUs if they could recognize us or even uh, accredit our local chapters. But uh, their answer would be, uh, wala na, we filled up already the two slots uh, based on the locally recognized uh, NGO. Or at least when we check, those locally recognized NGOs are affiliated with uh, uh, local officials. So that's uh, probably one area that we should uh, look into. No? strengthening or also making sure that the accreditation process for the CSOs are rigorous. Thank you, Thank you for that. So, balik ulit sa uh, integrity of the entire uh, accreditation system. Uh, any other comments? Okay, so I think Senator JB will be glad na his uh, proposal is uh, not uh, controversial. So, We will, we will now, uh, we, we will now, uh, are the ALGs here? Is the ALG? Mr. Javier? Uh, yes, please, 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 if you have, if you have any reaction or comments. Ay, nabasa nyo na ba po ito? 902? Senate Senator, Senator, I have no copy of the sources of... Senate Bill number 9. Oh, sige. Okay, just uh, daanan nyo na muna. But, na sige, ganito. It, it would be unfair to you to get your... Uh, we want kasi the, we want the department's position. So, just uh, communicate with this committee. Not necessarily in a hearing like this, but in a letter na lang. They give us the position or uh, inputs of the DALG on Senate Bill number 902. Okay. Yes, po. That's our agreement. One week, pwede? Uh -huh. 
thank you. Let, let me the DLG position. Ha? Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we will now leave, leave the subject matter. We go to the second to the last item in our uh, agenda this afternoon. Senate Bill number 1796, Creating an Election Code Recodification Committee. Okay, Attorney Osdon, please give us the essence of the bill. Through Senate Bill 1796 is also by Senator Laila De Lima. Uh, it recognizes the need to recodify the election laws to make sure that all existing legislation are in harmony with each other. So it seeks to establish a multi-sectoral election code re re codification committee or ECRC under the administrative supervision of the COMELEC, which will be responsible for preparing the draft of the new election code. Okay, any comment, uh, especially from the COMELEC? Is there is there already an internal project or effort uh, in the COMELEC to review or review the election code and codify all of those also loose uh, concepts out there? Uh, yeah. uh, yes, sir, there is an internal uh, unit in the COMELEC which is doing the updating of the current uh, election laws. Uh, Indeed, the Omnibus Election Code uh, contains several provisions that are no longer applicable and they have been superseded or repealed by subsequent laws. So, we have a uh, direction to update it. So, itong, we welcome the, the passage of this, uh, this uh, bill. We publish the process of updating and codifying and then we uh, will have more professional uh, ano, Kasi experts yung a hawak. Yeah, internal lang ito di Comelec. Eh. Yes, Election law is your breakfast, yes, your lunch, sir. and your dinner. Who can be more uh, experts than the Comelec people? Pero sa yung mga inputs from outside. outside Kasi baka people. tumagal, sir. Eh. If we yes, now, sir. If, no, baka tumagal pala. No. If we, now, if we, uh, we pass a law for a recodification committee, eh, ikokompose pa ulit yung mga ano, then they might start sir. from scratch. And then, how, what is the status of your project? Uh, meron lang kami sa, uh, in-update lang namin sa yung, yung current on this election code. We removed there yung mga provisions that are no longer uh, applicable. And then we we'll put in there yung mga current laws, just like registration. Kasi bakit, al alam mo, bakit nasabi ko bakit tumagal? Kasi if you have already a working draft na dinahanan na ng mga experts, you can easily find a legislator to author and to sponsor your bill. Uh, okay. Kumusta na tayo? How, how are we? What's up? the status? Yung nga, sir, nasa stage pala ko na uh, we have updated yung ano, to the point na yung current laws ipinasok namin sa isang code and then we, we remove yung uh, no longer uh, applicable or enforceable provisions. Ano pa na yung sa stage na yun, sir? Law of the AES. Nasali din doon? Yeah, ipapasok yun doon, sir, para sa uh, mechanism ng sa election. Pati mga plebiscite laws, uh, wala yung manner of conducting plebiscite, wala, wala kang magkikita sa omnibus election code or any other laws. Eh, yung law of the initiative na pinag-usapan kanina, pasok doon? Uh, by, nasa by resolution yun, sir, pero Pwede nyo ipasok kasi sa chapter. Sa omnibus election code, wala. Yun. Pero ipapasok na rin si mga existing laws. Mr. Chairman. Kasi i-go-group natin sa related. Uh, so, who, can we have the name of the person in charge of this ongoing project? Okay, Mr. Director, si... Uh, uh, Deputy Executive Director, si Mapus. Okay. And how many people are working with you on this project? Ilan na yun na lang, sir. Consisted yung mga department directors ng within COMELEC. Did the NBAC give you a timeline? Nasa strategic planning pa lang namin, sir. Hanggang 20, ano ba yung current? 2022. 2022. You will have to 2022 for 25? Strategic plan namin ng 6 years. Baka may bagong batas na kami lalabas niya. Yes, sir. Mga bagong lumalabas. Sige, ganit. Director Tolentino, can you relay the request of this committee to the NBank? For the NBank to consider fast-tracking the project. Maganda kasi yung project eh, to codify election laws, then submit to Congress, we will sponsor it here. 
Experts naman kayo dyan eh. You're, 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 you're the recognized experts on election law eh. Kung pwede lang i-fast track. I mean, not, not 2022 naman sana. I mean, let's have uh, four, four, uh, four more months, six more months, you know. Uh, I, 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 uh, I really, it's just really, it's 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 So, I think si Senator De Lima wants the, to establish a legal framework by which we can do this. Ang, ang sa inyo naman, for purposes of expediency, and nandiyan naman yung COMELEC, and they're the expert in this field. Um, ang suggestion namin, sir, is that we cannot give it all to COMELEC, open it also to to ano, to stakeholders. They hindi lang naman, they're the election managers, but uh, we also would like to take an active part in 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 this in this project because we have found there are actually provisions there that uh, that are really or should be should be you'd stand for more improvement like for example yung palagi kong inuulit-ulit sir the provision of uh, documents and files from the automated election system it should be provided to interested parties because that's part of auditability features so yun ang, ang ibig ko sabihin that stakeholders like us should be allowed to participate na, hindi lang sila yeah. wala wala rin ano eh kasi bill bill, bill is filed here and it is heard uh, in a hearing like this where well, you can participate then second step TWG where stakeholders will be uh, invited so there will there will really be participation I think it will save time pero they are also taking their time <laughs> <laughs> medyo, medyo pwedeng sana... Uh, ano. Mr. Chair, yun pala nakalimutan ko. Yung automated election system niya, hanggang ngayon, wala pa inter, uh, implementing rules and regulations. Sampung taon na po yun. You may ask me. Is that thing good? Or does the comment confirm that? And then, what does the law require you to issue IRR? If the answer is yes, well, when was the deadline and uh, how late are we? If wala pa bang IRR? Yes, Edi. We, we have been issuing the appropriate uh, COMELEC resolutions to implement the AES. Maybe they're thinking of a different IRR. They're, they're thinking of the IRR of the departments. May mga ganun yes, kasi. Yes, Okay, so if, if uh, some stakeholders are not satisfied with the action of the COMELEC, that resolutions do not amount to the IRR, then maybe it's time to question it before the courts. If uh, COMELEC resolutions do not qualify as the IRR mentioned in the law. Okay. Ganun na lang gawin natin. Okay. Oh, ah, yes. So, Mr. Saragosa. Sir, just on Section 2 on the composition, uh, maybe I just find it um, quite disturbing lang na COMELEC would, should appoint yung even the members or nominees ng Congress uh, dun sa membership niya and even yung nominees ng integrated bar maybe yung appointment by the Comelec and Bank should be limited only to the chair as well as to the three experts on the field of election but as to the nomination automatic na po dapat for the IBP uh, nominated representative as well as from the election watchdog organizations and the four members of uh, of Congress. Para ex officio, ano na lang po dapat sila. Thank you, uh, Mr. Saragosa. Any other comment? Okay, so we're, we are ready to leave this and we will now proceed to the last item in our agenda. Uh, Senate Bill number 1858 providing for the conduct of hybrid elections. But in the meantime, uh, let's have a three to five minute break. Take your merienda.
Okay, so uh, we're ready to the show. The last item in our agenda. Senate Bill Number 1858, providing for the conduct of hybrid elections. Attorney Osdon will again give us now the essence of the bill. Senate Bill 1858 by Senate President Vicente Soto III provides for the conduct of hybrid national, local, and ARMM elections through manual voting and counting at the precinct level and automated transmission and canvassing. It covers the May 2019 elections and thereafter. So it aims to address the issues of a fully automated election system. It provides for a detailed process from filing of certificates of candidacy to voting um, canvassing. To vote canvassing. We need the opinion of Kamilikir if you have studied the bill, the said bill. Said system is ED. Thank you, sir. So, I pa clarify lang muna namin if this totally repeals RA 9369 or or hindi. Because, sir, uh, like for example, in in the repealing clause, it just says that the all laws that are not inconsistent for are inconsistent are hereby repealed. So there is no provision here on the Comelec Advisory Council. There is no provision on the international certification entity or to the uh, technical evaluation committee. These are the three bodies which would ensure that the system is operating properly, securely, and accurately. Now, that's the reason why we're asking, sir, if this bill totally repeals 9369, because if it were so, then how can we be assured that the, that the system that we will be using in 2019, the hybrid, would be secure, accurate, and are running properly. So I will answer you as a lawyer. If you look at the repealing clause, there is no specific. Uh, there is no specific uh, law being repealed. So we go to inconsistency. So since uh, there is still a an automated section of the hybrid, can a hybrid and tawag, it's not fully manual. Manual plus automated or use of computers with the source code and software. Maybe it is not. It will not be inconsistent if the if the role, <coughs> the roles of these bodies will continue to be played by the said bodies. <coughs> what will be what will be repealed would be the uh, uh, use of the BCM for counting. The, mas, the machine count at the precinct. Yun yung inconsistent because manual count at the precinct. Ito. Any anything else? Uh, in, in, in which case, sir, another uh, clarification. Uh, in page 11, uh, line 1, it says here that uh, return, election returns with separately printed serial numbers will not be canvassed. And the basis of the Board of Canvassers to determine whether uh, the election return shall be canvassed is the certification to be issued by the treasurers as to the serial number assigned to the voting precinct. So I assume this is the uh, manually prepared election returns, which we are familiar with, where we have serial numbers. But then in section 13, what is being canvassed are the electronically transmitted returns. But here in Section 10, uh, page 11, first line, it talks about uh, election returns that are manually prepared, ERs with serial numbers. So, <coughs> I, I, ano lang, sir? Consistency <coughs> lang, what are we really uh, going to use during the canvas? Is it the electronically transmitted, digitally uh, produced ERs or... Yun, sir. And then, and then as I mentioned earlier, sir, it is necessary also, if we will embark on this uh, new system, that uh, the, 
the codes of the system to be used in manually encoding the results should again pass through the code review and certification process by the International Certification Entity and the TEC just to ensure that the system works properly, securely, and accurately. Level of uh, vigilance and uh, standard as, uh, as with yes, yes, when, when there is now software involved and uh, autom automation involved. Yes, Secretary, yeah, you, you have uh, some comments? Take up on that, then the Attorney Glenn. Yes, sir, uh, I uh, more or less uh, agree to all the observation of uh, Comelec on, on, on this. Uh, it is, uh, in my uh, opinion, a totally uh, different, if this, will, if this were enacted into law, it will, of course, be a totally different uh, uh, law as in our uh, 93, 90, uh, 69 uh, uh -huh. basically as uh, if uh, because we have been thinking in fact in CAC we have been discussing this for so long that uh, 9369 uh, actually can include a hybrid system the only uh, problem is that the provision that whatever system will be used in the AES must have been used in a national election, uh, well, here in country or ab abroad, no? And that provision actually prevents all uh, local, local, local uh, initiative on the a AES, no? For example, sir, uh, <coughs> we have bought so many thousands, uh, in fact, uh, the uh, VCM and the PICOS machine is more than 100,000, no? and this is now our property. Now, uh, if we, for example, um, these are only machines. If we put here the source code that is locally developed by Filipinos, it, this machine will run on a source code developed by Filipinos. And being developed by Filipinos, not Smartmatic, Smartmatic can be totally out of the picture in our future election. We will just be using their machines, which we own now. But the source code here will be Filipino. And all of this, uh, the source code can be uh, subjected to all uh, examination no? as uh, provided by 9369 and uh, except that with that uh, provision that it has it, it has to be used in a national election then even that we cannot do no I think uh, our country our people have already undergone uh, three uh, automated election that uh, I think we are now more than, uh, uh, we have the skill, the talent, to make the source code. And uh, these machines, by the way, sir, has about five more elections. We can use this up to five elections uh, using our source VCM, code. VCM. Or even e the PICOS. Even the PICOS. We, uh, we can refurbish the PICOS. And it is ours. Uh, uh, all we only need to put in our own source code, our own source code. We have invested so much in this machine, and it will be a waste if we do not use them. No? And these machines can even be used for a hybrid, um, especially in transmission. Counting can still be uh, manual, because uh, then uh, ang pagsubuo, will not be per voter, but per tally of the precinct. Something like that, sir. So, hindi masasayang ang itong mga OMR. Out of curiosity lang muna. Uh, sabi mo kasi, Secretary, we have in invested so much uh, for these machines. Uh, we have bought the machines, itong nagamitin sa 2019. 
but they're running on software uh, of Smartmatic. What is, uh, what, uh, who, who owns the software? Have we also bought the software? No, no, Your Honor. No. We, we haven't bought the software, only the machines. Okay, the machines, okay. So if, if, if the amount is X per machine, ng ginastos na natin per machine, what percentage is software and what percentage is hardware machine? Uh, right now, sir, I think um, the, the cost of the machine includes the use of the software. And the, our right to use the software will ultimately expire. Tama mo ba yan? Kasi, ano na yan? So, election, I think we are now left with the machine. Yes, but are. I want to know uh, the proportion lang, proportionality of how much of the, of the ultimate price that we are paying for the machine and, and, and its use. What percentage is for software and what percentage is for hardware? Out of curiosity lang po. Uh, the cost of software is more or less 3,000 pesos per unit. I mean, if we, we start making computations. So that's how many percent, Jean? It's about 5%, sir. Of the amount we invested on these machines, 5% is software, which we, which, which, will, which we will lose, and then 95% is the hardware. Okay? Yan yung computation niya, just for me. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much for that. Okay, uh, any other comment? Uh, Attorney uh, Chong. Yes, sir. I will not hide my intentions. Any, any, any action that will remove Smartmatic, I will be very happy. Now, <clears throat> uh, sir, um, with respect to <clears throat> with uh, respect to UCK radio, we agree that uh, our A9369 is sufficient um, to implement a hybrid election system. <clears throat> we agree with that. Um, with respect to the use of the machines, it is also possible that uh, the machines can be used, but using the software of another vendor. Of course, we don't know who that is, but uh, with respect to, I know that there are two, there are two possible objections. There are hurdles. One is um, um, that they should have been tested in the previous elections, national or local. But so um, any any developer who will develop the program that can run the system can actually test it every day in the House of Representatives because they have an election every day. There is a voting there every day. Bawat araw-araw-araw po sila nagbubutuhan kami, nagbubutuhan po kami doon araw-araw nung panahon ko. I'm sure they are still voting every day there. So, pwede po mag-testing doon because it did not say that it should be a nationwide election testing. So, you can test it over a long period of time. The second one is yung single largest completed contract contract. I have always repeated this again and again in SLCC because this has been used by Smartmatic to block all other, all other uh, um, competitors. Kasi, di ba, if the project is 9 billion pesos, the 50% SLCC is 4.5 billion. Malaki na po yun para sa other competitors. So they're using that to block other competitors para makontrol nila itong contracts ng ating eleksyon. I think we should have, we, should, we can find a way to um, reduce that or you can actually pwede naman gamitin ni Comelec you build the one third in Mindanao one third in Visayas one third para bumaba ko yung SLCC so that other competitors can join uh, can participate and you open actually the field to more vendors now with respect to the sir with respect to the hybrid election system I think it's gaining traction in the among our people na it's more acceptable because meron kang ang hata na tamang bilang doon sa precinct level. In the case kasi kay Smartmatic, um, ang nangyayari po kasi, if I will, if I will um, visualize it, parang nagbubutuhan mo tayong lahat. Pagkatapos po ng butuhan, binigay po natin lahat ng boto kay Smartmatic o ayan ang lahat ng balota namin. Tapos si Smartmatic at si Comelec papasok ng isang kwarto o silid, bibilangin nila doon, tapos paglabas nila, sasabihin nila, o oh, ito na yung resulta. Which the people will never see how did you read it, how did you count it. But with a hybrid election system, 
everybody sees how the vote is counted. And it suffices the political stability na kita nila yun eh. So, the next step would be the transmission um, the transmission by automated means. Kasi, ang totoo lang talaga, yung malawang bayaan naman sa manual elections nangyayari doon sa election returns as they are transmitted from one level to the other manually. Napupura, isang daang buto, i-slow pick mo lang yung zero sa dulo, sampu na lang ang buto mo. Ay kung 100, well, sampu yung buto mo, pwede mong dagdaga din ng zero, nagiging 100. So, as it, as the election returns is manually transmitted from one end to the other. But if it's tra transmitted automatically, we actually do see, achieve the same result. Minus lang talaga ng Smartmatic. And we have greater transparency. Now, ang, ang suggestion namin, sir, to, with respect to hybrid system, I don't know, I have not read the uh, Senate, Senate Bill um, 1858. Ang suggestion po namin, voting by shading pa rin. When, when we, when, if, if we proceed to hybrid election system, voting by shading because it facilitates the manual count at the end of the day. Kasi kung handwriting po, uh, maaari ang Pedro ay magmumukha pa. No. So yung pagbibilang po ng teacher, yung mga watchers nasa likod, mag-aaraw po yan. Si Pedro yan, hindi si Pablo yan. So that's why nagtatagal lang yung pagbibilang. But if it is voting by shading, it actually facilitates faster. We go back to the original established precinct at 300,000 precincts, 200 per precinct lang ang butante. And if voting by shading, Siguro mga ito ay tapos na po yung halaman. And then you can start counting while the sign is still up. But hindi. Actually, you can start already counting. And since it's only 200 voters per precinct, mga tatlo hapat na oras lang yun, tapos na po. Mga alas patro na hapat, tapos na po yung bilangan. And then we start transmitting. We actually achieve the same fast results, minus lang yung smart packet, and we have greater transparency and credibility. Can you, can you describe now the automated... Uh, portion aspect. Ang okay, uh, automated aspect po, sir, we actually start with the voting. Ganun din naman po. Uh, Magsisheed po tayo ng voto. Yes, sir. Sisheeding ng voto. Actually, the hybrid is also the same. In so far as the automated and the hybrid, it's actually the same. Ang proposal namin, voting by sheeding. Ang, ang automated lang, pipila yung tao. Because you only have one, one machine. Eh. You only have one machine. That's why pipila ang tao, ahapot ka ng alas 5 ng hapon. And you have 600 voters per precinct. Uh, okay, after, yes, after the counting now, uh, in, in okay, after the counting that you're proposing, after the counting, what happens? After the counting, eh? yeah, after the counting, the counting is public. But there's also um, a, a tap, or let's say we can use a tablet for the process of transmission. Ang nakita ko dito sa kahit ito, sir, na may projector, na the votes are projected on a screen, at hindi ko matapos yun. As a matter of fact, I will prefer that one because a projector can be used by the school. Actually, dual yung purpose yun. If while the counting is going on, nagbibilang, or say, like, so for example, um, uh, painter, then it will be also showing the projector, but you get a vote um, showing that so long. It will also show there that you have a vote. Then from here, from the tablet, you just make that one automatically. Of course, with the usual priorities, na meron digital signature, yung tatlong totoong digital signature, unlike now, na isa o dalawa lang ang pangirma. Sorry. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, actually, sir, we're thinking on uh, how to make use of our present assets and how to make the election as credible as possible. Yung hybrid po, uh, we are thinking something like this. Uh, the same ballot as we have been using in 2019, uh, she no? but instead of feeding it to the machine, they, it will be dropped in a ballot box. And after uh, polling, this ballot box will be red. Uh, yung, yung mga nakashade, it will be red, and kung kwan, saka lang i-feed sa machine. So, one by one yon. So, that is the manual counting. Nakita lang lahat, nakita lang lahat, and uh, then kung then, of course, we have the uh, receipt. Then, kung nagtali yung receipt, doon sa, sa, what, sa manual, then pwede nang i-send. No? And then, another, another uh, concept, check, checklist, 
Yung pag nasend niya, pwede natin all the uh, watches can get the uh, result on the uh, transparency server almost instantaneously. So, dalawang check yun, sir. We know that the machine uh, transmitted the number that was seen by everybody kasi kung sa ngayon, pag nasubo mo na yan, wala na. Pero ito, uh, hindi mo na isusubo at mabilis din because wala kang isusubo, wala kang lilinya. But after pa yun lang, mag, magpapatagal ng konti, babasahin yung, yung nasured and kung okay, pasok, Get the receipt and compare it with what the conduct. Ito nga yun, oh, yung board of canvasser na and the public, poll watchers, will be actually watching and uh, ensuring na kung ano yung kinount ng machine is the actually. So, wala nang random, uh, walang amare, para inodit mo lahat ng presinto. Um, for, ay, uh, takot ko lang yung handling of the ballot, baka may mark doon na uh, it will lead to rejection. Yun ang, they, therefore, they, then we will now have a discrepancy automatic. Na, na, no, sir, na, I na, think na, 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 whatever, na reject siya, or what, yun ang, yun ang, yun ang takot ko. Ihuhulog yan sa, sa ballot box. Yes. No, then, of course, carefully then, isusu, uh, pag ah, una, i-handle muna siya ng BI eh, kasi okay. ika-count mo muna eh. Yan yung point ko. Apo, pag nga pa na yun. Handle muna, i-pile up muna, and then i-feed ulit. So, okay, okay po. So, yun lang. Basta pag-aralan mo. Pwede balik tayo po, parang less handling. Pagkuha ko, i-feed. Feed. Then, ah, ayun. Of course, kailangan din lang muna. Pumasok na siya sa loob ulit. Apo, wala. Okay, so bakit pag-isipan natin yung mabuti. Yun lang naman. Ayaw, Senator, Senator. Mr. Chair, actually, anim na elections na po yung tinakbuhan ko, no? Uh, since 2001, tatlong manual and tatlong uh, itong fully automated. And uh, I've observed um, itong dalawang different uh, election system. And uh, talaga hong parusa nung manual na dalawang linggo na hindi ka pa napropoclaim. Uh, si, si, dating iayaw namin, dalawang linggo na Uh, hindi pa ho kami na-proclaim dahil ang daming gulo pa. Uh, it's not only very stressful, but also physically, nakita ko ho yung teachers eh. Physically, imagine they will be there at 5 a.m. Tapos, uh, baboto lahat ng tao, magko-close ng 3, 4, tapos magbibilang pa ho sila, tapos mag-aaway pa ho yung watcher. And... Um, Uh, it's really, really, uh, uh, for me, it's really uh, stressful. No? And uh, that's also where election violence uh, comes in. No? Dahil nga yung watcher, believe, uh, experience ko yung watcher talaga ho nag-aaway. No? Um, and uh, I know for a fact that uh, after automated, automating the um, election process, election violence uh, went down by almost, uh, I think, about 60 to 70 percent nationwide, no? Because nawala ni precinct level na gulo, no? Um, I think, taking into account the comments ni uh, Attorney Chong, maybe we can find a, a way to uh, make the precinct, I don't know if it's technology or maybe the process on the secretary, to make the precinct Uh, at the precinct level, accountable. I think what nangwawala dito yung accountability at the precinct level. But in a, in a way, na hindi naman yung dalawang linggo na hindi pa ho na-proclaim yung mga kandidato, I think we're moving back to prehistoric. Instead of moving forward, we're moving back to prehistoric stage. Eh. No? And uh, it's really it's really stressful. Oh? And I think most candidates will uh, feel the same way. But I, 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 if we can find a, a technology that will make... Uh, at the precinct level, accountable, and that will be the best case. No? Uh, Attorney Ularbal? Just one point, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we'll just submit a position paper because in the uh, election law, the Kapisana mga broadcast ng Pilipinas was specifically designated as one of the recipients of the result as a media. Yes, executive director. Uh, I'll jump off from the statement of Senator win about accountability sa precinct level. So, you'll note that during the trusted build, 
or during the code review by the international certification entity. Yung trusted build, which is the final step in compiling all the applications, the international certification entity will generate the hash of all the applications. And then that hash will be printed and distributed to the parties, uh, the, the I's, the TEC, the parties present will sign, and then it distribute yan. And the instructions there is that that hash will appear when you turn on the VCM. That's the first step that the watcher should do. Check the hash. If it's the same, that means there was no alteration in the software being used by the BCM. Then second, yung ano na nga, uh, when I feed my ballot, comes out this receipt, and then uh, I don't think the people objected or, or during the last elections, di ba? So, Ako, I checked I check my receipt. It uh, okay, corresponded no, to my votes. Diba? That's so. why. So, you know, uh, those are the two steps which would show that the system being used, they are the same system certified by the ICE and certified by the TEC as the software that runs properly, securely, and accurately. Tingnan lang natin yung hash. Even the election returns, may hash din yan. Titingnan din natin yan. Kung iba ang resulta, then we know that there is something wrong. So, yeah, those are the automated uh, steps that would ensure yung accountability nga na sinasabi mo, Senator Wynn, at the precinct level. Secretary? Uh, yes, sir. Um, as uh, CAC, we really uh, go with a fully automated uh, election. Uh, but important rin uh, that our people knows that uh, ito ay uh, talagang their votes are being counted. Now, so, this is where, uh, dito tayo magaling sir, eh, mga Pilipino, to come up with a, uh, this the uh, code, uh, the software that will ensure this, no? and it can pass all the uh, code reviews, anybody can um, uh, re uh, review and, and uh, uh, examine it. Yun lang ang kailangan eh. And of course, kung wala na yung Smartmatic, I think everybody will be happy. <laughs> sa, hindi, uh, sa, sa tingin ko resulta ito nung ano eh, no? Hindi, hindi ko resulta itong hybrid, the, 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 naisip yung hybrid as a result of the panawagan na makita naman ang bilangan, yun, tapos na hindi naman masyadong matagal ang resulta. Eh, yun eh, kaya nga hybrid ang tawag balance. Yeah. Attorney, 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 yes. Are you giving way to, uh, yes, attorney Chong, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with the hybrid system, we can assure that mabilis din naman, sir. Oh, oh. Now, uh, I'll just quickly answer yung sinabi ni Executive Director, sir, um, because he said it. Ang, ang counter naman namin dyan is Section 11 of Republic 9369, amending Republic 9436 says na yung TEC certification must certify that the uh, automated election system in, on all its hardware and software components are operating accurately, properly, and securely based on the following documented results. One of the documented results, number six or number three, is the completion of a successful successful completion of a source code review. Malina po, sinabi ninyo, inadmit ninyo, hindi kayo si Chairman Villantes, 2010, walang source code review. So kung walang source code review, then you violated Section 11 of RE 9369. Then it questions the credibility of the election results. It's because you violated it. Eh. We would not be complaining if we didn't see these violations. And you have admitted it. Eh. That's why we're pre pressing for hybrid election system. Because hindi naman yung sinusunod I don't want to get into that quarrel. Let's go back to hybrid. Oh, Because you did not follow the law. Eh. Eh, Section 11 of Republic 9369. Oh, kahit pabasahin mo yan, you didn't follow the law eh. So, what, anong, anong guarantees namin? Anong guarantees namin? Sinabi nga ni Chairman Brillantes. Atoni Chong, thank you for uh, bringing attention to this Section 11 because we will also have to, repro even if we adopt a hybrid, we will have to reproduce this yes, in the hybrid election law. Kasi it talks, 
It takes some hardware and software. Then. Yes, sir. Uh, Actually, maganda. yun yung basic requirements yes sir. Okay. Oh, now, yung say, Senator Datsan lang naman, with due respect to your honor, uh, yung concern mo is really bad. But, you know, the power to make it happen is also in your hands. Because, because election is a subject matter that is well within the power of Congress to regulate. So, ang, ang proposal po namin, sir, in the case of automated election, full automated, wala man akong pre-proclamation controversies. E di tanggalin din po natin yan sa hybrid election system. Kasi yung pre-proclamation controversies, yan ang nakakatagal eh. Yan ang nakakagulo sa presinto, yan ang nakakagulo sa canvassing. Kaya sabi ko ni Senator Katsalian, na dalawang linggo na, hindi pa siya napoproclaim. It's because of that pre-proclamation controversies in manual elections. Doon nagkakagulo. Ang, ang bawat partido, of course, they will aim for, kung nanalo si, <laughs> si Senator Katsalian, siyempre hindi siya pag-uupi ng kanyang kalaban. So they will invent all possible, ano, all possible opposition. But here is what the law can set in and tell them, stop those pre-proclamation controversies. So ang proposal namin, even a public election system, should exclude pre-proclamation controversies para mabilis din po ang proclamation. Thank you, Anne. I'll try to do that if you read the bill and doon pa rin, ano, pre-prox, so please. Nakita ko po rito, that's why I brought it up so that it's actually within your hands, your honors, to to put that into law. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was just thinking, um, a lot of the violence and the delay um, that occurs in the precinct level is because of the na local candidates. What if we separate the local elections from the national elections? Would that solve it? Because now, you don't need synchronize. You don't need synchronized elections anymore. In fact, you can have you know all the local officials of Luzon on the first week of May, all the local officials of Visayas in the second week of May, and so, so, and then on the national level, it's a separate election. So, kasi nag-aaway-aaway dyan, nag-delay dahil sa local eh. It's not really the national. Okay, tignan namin if it can be constitutionally done. As I recall, I think the Supreme Court mandated synchronize. Tignan na lang natin. Yes, since the Constitution is now being reviewed, Yes, yes, uh, yes, tama yan, tama, tama. Yes, Mr. Chair, the, uh, yung sa, I think going, taking off from what Attorney Ivan said, no, sa, sa national, hindi naman natin masyadong concern yung local, eh, no? kasi there's too many precincts for a national candidate to, to, uh, to guard no? or to uh, monitor. But it's really the locals ang mainit. Eh, no? Yan talagang mainit. That's why they really fight tooth and nail uh, for each precinct. No? Uh, but nung, automat, nung automated, no, uh, di, nung nag last election, nag, uh, minonitor ko rin sa local namin. Dahil nga sa mabagli, sa, ang bilis eh. No, after, uh, alam ko, for two or three hours, proclaim ka na. Yung mga watcher, pag sarado ng prisik, uwian na lahat eh. <laughs> no, wala nang gulo, uwian na lahat. Kumakain na sila, by balita time, kumakain na lahat. No? I, I'm just saying, um, in my observation after six elections, the fully automated outweighs the uh, the precinct level chaos you know? and uh, if we can find a technology that can merge uh, what attorney um, Chong was um, uh, suggesting uh, I'm not even averse to the precinct level accountability in fact it should be you no know? there should be a precinct level accountability but if we can automate it you know? so that uh, hindi ho tayo babalik sa dating ginagawa natin no um, then that will be the best case. Tax ED, tell me. clarify ko lang yung source code review which uh, former chairman Brillante said that uh, did not happen. I think he's referring to the local source code review because what the TEC uh, uses as basis for its certification is the code review conducted by the international certification entity. In fact, when the when the ICE will issue its findings, sinasabi niya lagi that nag-code review sila and these are the findings, accurate siya, etc. So that's the basis of the TEC when it certified that the system is running properly, accurately, and securely. Yung statement ni Chairman Brillantes refers to local source code review, which is not part of the TEC certification. 
Uh, yes, sir. The yung, yung uh, concern ni uh, uh, Senator Wynn uh, about uh, kasi ho, yung yung um, yung pila during the automation is quite uh, because of the limited numbers of uh, DCM no, and PCOS. Pero kung katulad ng uh, yung hybrid na mag-fill up lang yung mga tao, then you can limit its uh, precinct to about 400 or so. So, wala pa ngang alas tres or alas tos, tapos na lahat, sir. Eh. And then, doon na mag-umpisa, you will not need so much uh, VCM anymore because lahat, boxes na, ballot boxes na yung pupunta doon, and buksan natin tong ballot box from precinct X, 400, isusubo yan, binabasa, subo, basa, subo, uh, so, so maybe that will only take about uh, kung may time and motions could tayo, but less than three hours or, or four hours. So, sinasabi ni yung, yung ano da yung sinasabi niyong balota na ipapasok. That's about approximately approximately six seconds each. Yes. Oh, the yes. six, six seconds, seconds each. So, siguro sabi natin na na one minute yung pagbasa or or so, no? Para pag nakwap na basa na sa kaisubo, yun six seconds lang yun actually. So the whole uh, uh, cluster precinct, I think after mga two hours, three hours, tapos na, no? But of course, this has to be uh, subjected to a time and motion study. Pero yun po, no? Uh, if we go into hybrid, yun po ang nakikita namin that will make it uh, very much less costly and we'll still be using yung automated na nabili na natin. Except yung source code that has to be by, done by a Filipino or Filipino companies, no? And yung sinasabi ko ng COMELEC na 3,000 per machine, a eh, Filipino can do it at very much less than that, siguro 500. Siguro baka may iba, gratis lang for uh, yung bragging rights lang gusto nila makuha doon. No? So, so this is something that we should also explore. No? Na yung source code has to be done by the Filipino. Let's do away with Smartmatic all throughout. Yung machine nila, hindi na yan Smartmatic. Uh, Philippi Republic of the Philippines na yan, and your source code will be Filipino, and it will be open to any Filipino interested. The source code can be brought at home, subjected to laboratory tests, which we cannot do now with Smartmatic source, uh, with the Smartmatic source code. Noon ka lang sa isang kwarto, babasahin mo lang yun, but you cannot subject it to actual machine validation. It is, uh, so, uh, my question, okay, you mentioned the source code, review mentioned section 11, refers to the TEC certification. Of what value now is the source code to be conducted by the political parties? If you can just simply disregard that. So, uh, during the 2016 elections, when the reviewers would see something, they could give their suggestions, and if we still had enough time, we would incorporate it in the software, in the final software to be used. Now, what happened in 2016, we still continued the source code review even after the final trusted build. So what happened is that those uh, comments and suggestions from from that period after the trusted build, we are now incorporating it in the current uh, 2019 software. So yung tungo yung gagamitin natin ng 2016 sir, ah uh, 2019 includes all enhancements made, including the suggestions of the code reviewers, which we use in 2016. Yung hindi nakahabol yun ang dinadagdag natin as enhancements for 2019. So, that's a participatory process, but it's just like uh, a source code review. Are you, yes. You're, uh, you are uh, allowing the so-called industry players to also uh, suggest enhancements? You uh, uh, yes, sir. Meron kasi silang gusto mga nice to have. Uh, kailangan ito. Or kasi in, in our JCOC hearing, you mentioned 80 enhancements eh. Uh, how many enhancements can you attribute to inputs from the political parties because of their source code review? Uh, there may run, there may run, sir. Uh, so, yeah. next hearing, I will ask that question. Just be ready to answer. Mr. Saragosa. 
Wala. Actually, sir, yung idea naman of going hybrid as pointed, correctly pointed out by the chair kanina is because there were some questions on the transparency uh, issue. So, perhaps uh, it's also time for us to consider. Uh, we've been expecting kasi na uh, when we were called for last time, uh, we understand uh, the voter voter receipt would be would have some great improvements for for the 2019 elections. Maybe as a way of conflict, uh, conflict building measures, kung the system really works uh, for for our makita, uh, maybe baka pwede nating include na bilangin rin uh, after if we can take some time and resources, additional time and resources, after we can after magbilangan, baka pwede bilangin rin siya, and on the spot, if we can already do also a, a manual audit sa precinct level talang on the day of the election itself, uh, para makita na rin natin, and we remove whatever uh, cloud of doubt, hanging na uh, uh, di ato tinatanong pagbasa and everything, that would be uh, greatly uh, certain kung uh, right on the day of the election, right after the close of the polls, we belong, uh, we have two different systems, the manual audit, uh, and at the same time, yung voter receipt na inuulog rin naman natin sa box, maybe uh, it's one way also verifying kung tanga binasa, and if it would be consistent with the results na pinadala ng, ng machine, na pinansmit, consistent with yung uh, lalabas with the manual audit, and consistent also with uh, yung greeting at the, as, as, as it appears on the voter receipt, that perhaps we will be able to, to uh, get a picture na tama, gumana yung system, wala pa yung question doon. Mr. Chong? Thank you, Mr. Chong. Actually, Chair, the proposal of uh, Mr. Saragossa was already contained in my position paper that I submitted to the Commission on Elections in January 2016, nagsubmit ako ng position paper sa COMELEC, sir, in relation to the voter receipt. As a matter of fact, that position paper was adopted by the Supreme Court in Bagumbayan versus COMELEC. Ang sabi ng Supreme Court, may solusyon naman yung voter receipt na hindi mabenta. Yung sinasabi ni Glenn Chung, yung i-drop mo in a separate box, that's what the court said. It adopted my position paper. But the other part of my position paper, sir, says, that the, upon the close of the polls, for purposes of transparency and credibility, the, the receipts should be given to the watchers. They form themselves a committee, and they, they choose five positions, not all five, at random, check them, manually count them, then compare with the results. Of course, the common like, never agreed to what your honors. So, and then that's when I, I would like to revive that proposition, but again, no mathematic under any circumstances. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, again, no. Attorney Chong mentioned the position paper. So the committee would request all those present here, the groups, individuals, uh, if you're so interested, please submit a position paper on the concept of hybrid election and, if possible, specifically on SB 1858. So, pwede nyo naman i-simultaneously i-tackle po yun. So, because I will, I will now ask a very crucial question. Let us say, magustuhan namin itong 1858. May oras pa ba? Uh, can... Let us say, let, ano, ganun tayo kabilis kunyari, let us say, uh, ano na ngayon, August, uh, let us say in September, both houses, and then the president would sign the enrolled bill, uh, it becomes law. Can, with this, is, still, is, still, still, uh, is there still time to, to shift to another system? Because this is not AES talaga, but uh, can we shift? Uh, ED? Uh, sir, kung gagamitin pa natin yung TEC, yung ICE to certify 
the AES, then we don't have time anymore because the the scheduled start of the uh, code review and certification process by the ICE is scheduled on September 15. So the software or the encoding program should be ready by that time. Otherwise, we will start moving and then the TEC might not be able to issue its certification on time. But since we like it very much, for example, then the only hybrid that we can implement is the one described by the secretary. That's it, Diva. That's the only one. That's the only hybrid. That's the only hybrid now the which we can implement. Dagdag na lang yun. Nagdagdag yun siya ng manual counting. Uh, pero bantay lang na tayo dun sa smudges, uh, crumpling of the paper, yun lang, may reject. Uh, yes, Mr. Secretary. Uh, actually, sir, it can be even better with the suggestion that uh, the the uh, VCM will, will uh, the same manner that we have done it uh, in uh, 2016, we just count the uh, receipts, water receipts. And that will be... Hindi po, uh, hindi po, kasi balot ang, ang hybrid is the manual counting of the balot. Well then, sir, the, uh, uh, count the actual... Receipts would be before manual the, audit. Uh, yes. you, you, you describe it, uh, that's the only... That's the, uh, given the time limitation, that's the only hybrid system now which we can implement. You sinabi mo. But uh, we'll still be using Smartmatics. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But uh, actually, with that hybrid... Uh, uh, counting, the manual counting, at least the uh, people will be confident now that their votes will be counted. Yes, Edi. Sir, uh, we, we are open to the suggestion of uh, Chairman Rio, but uh, I think we have to first conduct a time and motion study uh, together with uh, the ICT or CAC para makita talaga natin how long it will take to manually count the shades feed, come up with the receipt. Medyo matagal yun, sir. When we discuss namin ni Senator Sherry, we may even need the two teams of the BEI. I mean, uh, shifting of people. Yes, Secretary. Uh, yes, uh, actually, sir, uh, my suggestion is to limit the number per, per because the, the voters now don't have to feed in their votes after uh, shading. No? They simply drop it on a ballot. So we just make uh, the the ballot the, where they will drop they will they, they drop their shaded votes as many as we can, and therefore the lines will be very much shorter. You lang gawin nila sir, drop ng drop. Dun tatagal na ngayon uh, yung time and motion dun sa actual counting. Yes sir, yung nga. And then yung nga sir, we can have some ways of uh, uh, by having more. In fact sir, ang panamin is uh, uh, yung yung ating watchers are quite limited, no? So we are actually suggesting the use of yung ating uh, uh, national service training uh, program, NSTP. Now, ito yung ROTC, ito yung uh, uh, civil service. There are a million of them, and they are young students who are, and they are going to participate in an activity that will define their future. So, so it, going to park ng kanilang um, uh, requirement to do uh, election duties, no? Yes. And, and one more, sir. I think important uh, the ballot should be shaded fully. Otherwise, mag ang watchers. Wait, 50% lang yan. Oops, 25% lang yan. So, mag na yan, sir. That's why the voters should be required to shade it fully. Sir, Your Honor. Uh, I promise you, Attorney Chong, one of the Attorney Hill. Attorney Chong. Um, I agree with that of Kay uh, Edie, na it should be fully seeded kasi yun naman ang kinampanya nila. But with the exception na, kung pwede naman actually kung ibang marka, kasi kahit smart mate kayo, pwedeng A kasi. I have seen ballots marked with X. I have seen ballots marked with check marks. I have seen ballots na parang, parang hotdog na nga yung boto. Natamaan lang yung wall, binoto pa. 
Actually, actually, Your Honor, I can show these examples later. Di ba, uh, Secretary Rio? Pwede ba unahin na muna ipasok tsaka manual? <laughs> no, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm trying, I'm just visualizing para gaano katagal yung, uh, kung yung maliit nga na, ano, itara, sobrang tagal na, malaki pa, no? I, I'm just visualizing, no? I'm not trying to visualize. And, I also agree with um, the chair that uh, I know th those ballots are very sensitive. Eh? A slight uh, dirt can uh, can have a, a technical technical uh, impact to the uh, pagpinasok doon sa machines. No? So, and the more fiscal handling, the more I think the more problems we'll have. No, but. Uh, so let me let me first uh, attorney Hello, but let me first recognize our visitors. The Right Honorable Mark Field, a member of Parliament, is the British Minister for Asia and the Pacific. Welcome to our hearing, sir. And he's accompanied by His Excellency Daniel Proust, the British Ambassador to the Philippines, as well as some officials of the British Embassy are here to witness our <coughs> committee hearing. This is uh uh, Mr. Minister, Mr. Ambassador, this is a <coughs> committee hearing of our Electoral Reforms uh, Committee. And right now we are on the hot topic of a uh, very controversial topic of uh, adopting, possibly adopting a hybrid election system for next year's election because the plan currently is to uh, continue with our fully automated system. So. This is the, uh, some people say that this is the proper balance hybrid where there is a manual component where the counting is done by the uh, board at the precinct level where, uh, on the blackboard or on, a, on, a, uh, on, pay, on Manila paper so that the voters will uh, witness the counting and then the consolidation of the results would be automated. So it's hybrid, it's a mix. So we are now on this topic and uh, uh, it's very interesting and, uh, <laughs> and uh, a little controversial. So uh, we will now continue with our discussion. Attorney Hularbal, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the, the point that the only practical way to implement this, this coming election was the suggestion of uh, Secretary Rio is well taken. But, uh, Your Honor, I'd just like to point out that in the sequence of things to be done, uh, there was another point uh, raised uh, along this line by Senator Gacharyan. If we put the ballots in the box, drop them before they are fed, the voter will not have a receipt. Because the sequence is, uh, that's the receipt that will give, uh, the other feeding that will give the receipt. It's just that point here. A good point, and we missed that point. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to inform our, our guests, uh, I'm Senator Pimentel, and this is Senator Gatchalian, and uh, we both were guests uh, of the uh, British Parliament when we, when we went there yes, to visit. Uh, and then uh, we have here our Commission on Elections. It is an independent, independent uh, constitutional body, so we're discussing, and some uh, and the resource persons, uh, practicing lawyers, and uh, 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 election, uh, ele election cost uh, organizations are here. So, so thank you for hosting us at the, uh, at the British uh, Parliament when we are there. Yes, yes sir. thank you. I'm sorry, I don't want to interfere with uh, this very important uh, uh, committee work. Um, other than to say, may I just uh, thank everyone. Uh, we we uh, say met uh, in London uh, towards the end of last year. Um, it's a first visit to me here to the, to the Philippines, uh, and I'm very excited by the strong bilateral relationships between our, our two countries, um, uh, particularly at the people-to-people -people level. A quarter of a million Filipinos live uh, in uh, the UK, a lot of them in London, in the constituency. Uh, the, uh, that, that, that I represent, um, but also there's a lot, a lot in, a, in, in international affairs, obviously in security, defense, intelligence, and in trade uh, relations. Um, there's also an opportunity to talk through issues such as um, the in illegal wildlife trade and climate change, where uh, we are doing our very best to assist. Um, we also assist at, at health level to, and, and, uh, uh, and a whole range of law and order. Uh, related issues. Um, I must say on electoral reform, I, I'm now a fifth term member of parliament. I've been a, an MP for 17 years. Um, we have a lot of these sorts of debates actually in, in the United Kingdom. And what I think is particularly important is 
uh, as we've discussed, the idea of this electoral reform being uh, an independent thing. It's, it, sh it shouldn't be for any one political party uh, to be able to, to, to dominate these sorts of issues. Uh, but they are very live issues, and they're live issues, fun enough, in the United Kingdom as well. Um, uh, but both the, the manner of ensuring we have a fair ballot. We, we have a system whereby you can now uh, request almost on demand a postal ballot, and, uh, and there has been some concern about the abuse of that system within the United Kingdom. Uh, and uh, we're perhaps uh, now moving back towards an idea that, uh, uh, that it shouldn't be there immediately on demand, but, but for, for other reasons, because that has led to, to problems. So, but, but may I take this opportunity really to wish you all the very best with all of your, uh, your debates. I'm not going to side in any way. You don't want some outsider telling you how you should run your electoral system, other than to say um, it's great to see there is a great passion and interest on this, these matters, um, and it's always worth remembering there are 105... Uh, million citizens, uh, I don't know how many voters, that, uh, that was 60, 65 million vo voters or so who uh, um, obviously uh, very much want to ensure that their voice is properly heard and it's great that, that you're doing your bit uh, to ensure that that does happen. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minister, for your uh, inputs. Sir. So, okay, so any, anybody else? Yes, Secretary? Are you? Yes, sir. Um, uh, actually, sir, in a manual voting, there is no receipt. When, when we are in the old times, when we write our ballot, there's no deceit. We just trust the B, BI to count our ballots. So this is basically the same, sir. So we are coming again and again. Uh, when we, if we adopt this, then we have, we have to make sure that the, if we need a new law to do this, the law will no longer require a receipt. No, that is issue. That's yeah, sir. Uh, uh, the, uh, the fact that there will be a public viewing, the counting manually, it's already the same as the protection we had in the old, old time. Because the Tamanaman, the input of Attorney Holderbal is assuming he's a, he, uh, 9369, but as it, it, it requires a receipt. So we have to, we have to change. Yes, Dr. Serrano? Yes, sir. Just thinking it aloud, uh, while listening to Secretary Rio, uh, yes, we, we, we were discussing this about for so many meetings in the CAC already. And, uh, if we're going to combine forces, the number of uh, PCOS and BCM, I think there would be enough for uh, bringing down the the number of voters in a particular uh, clustered precinct to 300 or even 350. Uh, and uh, considering the the average of 70 to 80 uh, percent uh, voters turnout, then I think we we could finish as early as uh, 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So using the same e AES technology up to the electronic transmission, uh, then we can, instead of having a random manual audit, then we can have a mandatory manual audit nationwide. So that would, uh, that would also answer for uh, the, the uh, uh, priority reason of uh, having a hybrid because of the uh, uh, doubts no? uh, created by by this uh, electronic transmission and the and the result generated by the uh, by the machine. So we can have both ways in a parang katulad pangalan ni Senator win-win solution or win-win uh, agreement. Very good. Uh, yes, uh, so. Uh, Maybe we have we will wrap up now, Madam Secretary Attorney Chong. Uh, Your Honor, just a quick addition to Secretary Rio. Um, if you actually remove the voter receipt, that's about 10 seconds per receipt. You actually save a lot of time. So the time that you save by not printing the receipt and in lieu of that you make a public count, that's the same thing. So you can do away with the voter receipt, make a public count. There's not much difference in the time. That's what I would like to add, Your Honor. Thank you. Am I correct in saying we need to amend the law? Because the law now has been interpreted by the Supreme Court to require a receipt. Tama? Or, or I, I think so. The, the requirement for a receipt is because the, the voter has to be satisfied that his votes have been correctly read and counted. But when you make a public count, that would have simply satisfied the voter receipt requirement. That's how I would argue it. If, if we accommodate the public count, can we do it without a new law? Can we do it under 9369? Uh, sir, probably the 
the Supreme Court decision, diba, that forms part of the law of the land. So in interpreting RA-9369, the Supreme Court said that Comelec should issue a receipt. So, you know why I ask that? Because if that is the only hindrance, then we have a very simple bill to pass which is to disable the requirement of the receipt. Yes, you know, you, 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 if you say that, yes, under existing law, we can accommodate it, but the problem is the receipt, it, it disable ko lang yun ba yun? I mean, oh, ano? What, what do you think from the Comelec? Agree now, I will see you, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you can, you can study it. You can study it. But I will just give you later instructions. I'll give you a time limit. But study it. Mahirap naman yung unfair naman yung on the spot. Eh, medyo complicated subject. Uh, Atol Hoy? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just an observation. The VV path that the law prescribes, it actually means voter verifiable paper trail. Now, the voter verifiable paper trail could be the ballot itself. The ballot itself is the VV path. Except that in the automated election, when you feed it, the voter could not verify. The voter could not verify the audit trail because it's fed into the machine. That's why the receipt substituted for the ballot to very for the allow voter to verify. But if the voter is able to verify because there's a manual para, then the ballot itself is already the receipt. Yet that is already the voter. You don't need to even touch the law. No, don't even. You mean to say because of that change in the procedure, the Supreme Court decision, if it is questioned, will also change because now the VP part has been satisfied. Yes, because the vote it's voter verifiable. Voter verifiable audit trail. Okay, so the time and motion, na lang siguro ang if we can. Na ito na. So if we are done, we will have to close now the the discussion. Okay. If Comelec can look into this, uh, but we're, we are not really faithful to the 1858, ah, iba, ibang system dito. Ah. So, uh, because for lack of time, medyo an entirely new system, malabo na. But let us say, to, to accommodate the concept of hybrid, we will pursue the idea of the secretary of the DICT, who is chairman of the CAC, an additional step in the existing AES system. Time and motion, manpower, uh, na additional manpower needed, and of course the budgetary implication. Kung pwedeng uh, pag-aralan po natin. And uh, ilang days kaya, uh, ED? Pa para lang may idea kami. Mr. Chairman? <coughs> para masagod din. Uh, two weeks, okay, sir? Two weeks? Can it be open to the public in time and motion? But they are in a... No, no, it is discussed not in a... It is discussed in a... Time and motion, no, no. Take a watch. Okay, Mr. Alvia. Uh, we welcome the suggestion of uh, Secretary Rio. Uh, we were just, uh, well, thinking out loud if we can explore at least piloting the proposal of Secretary Rio for the upcoming Marawi BSKE. Is it possible to do that? Since the Marawi BSKE is manual, I don't know if a portion of that could be automated, which is the transmission of the results. So we'll see. No? We can, can we utilize, since it's already September 22, I'm not sure how we can do it, but there's an opportunity for us to test at least a portion of the proposal of uh, Secretary Rio for a hybrid system. So just just asking if it's possible. No need to, do you want to answer now? Baka, baka, just study lang, for study na lang. And then, uh, ano na lang, formal communication to the committee na lang if it can be done or not, cannot be done. But at least give, give, the, give the idea a chance by examining it. You know. Okay, so, kung wala na, kasi, okay, so, I think we have discussed uh, sufficiently. Uh, uh, Executive Director Tolentino, can I follow up on the written Comelec 
uh, answer of, uh, stating the official response of the COMELEC on the issues raised in the privileged speeches of Senator Soto. Yung for, yung for, diba, in the last hearing, I asked for a written na kasi I was not satisfied with the verbal uh, uh, responses. Edi? We are actually preparing, sir, but we have to verify and validate the images presented during the the previous hearings. Like for example, the issue is related to the 2016 elections, mm. but the images, if you look at it closely, they all relate to the 2010 elections. Oh, this can, can you just can you just um, can you just point that out to so answer you? Oh, okay. Oh. Okay, sir. Kasi we, we, cannot, oh, we cannot take forever kasi kailangan Just point it out, yung deficiency nung nakita ninyo. Yes, sir. I, there are just four main issues raised in the two privileged speeches. Eh. Yes, sir. Yeah, and the answer okay, early transmission. Huh? Early, trans, early, tra early transmission, access of uh, US server, uh, Q servers, and the failure to transmit the three point something percent. Yes, sir. Yeah. The, what the official position uh, of the of the okay, so one, I can week, give one week sir oh, one week from now so i can give it to the senate president makita din niya okay. yes sir oh, any other matters okay so thank you senator sherwin thank you to all of you the family all of our resource persons our hearing is hereby adjourned